I've I've done heck I've done radio interviews where the radio guy was in another country. He was on vacation in Italy. Really? No, yeah, because he you just pipe through a main switchboard. Yeah. And so as long as you have a switchboard and and servers and all that, you can do it from pretty much anywhere now. So they take they run all the calls that you get through yep. something at, at TFR. Yep. At TFR. Wow, what a trip. I know. It's weird. And so you just log in and the one web page has the calls that come in. And I mean, it'd be nice, of course, you know, if I had somebody else, but I'm not going to try to be. So that's what he does. He monitors the calls for you at the peanut gallery? Not even that. He, he asked if he, if he could. I said, yeah, you don't have to. Okay. Because we, there's no point screening. Yeah. Because if you're in the conspiracy world, somebody could just fake their way into the calls. Yeah, I just give a, a, a weird name. Yeah, long time listener, first time caller, love the show. Yeah. And then it's like, you <laughs> yeah. suck, Mark. <laughs> so why even bother? So, which Dude, is good though, funny. because most of the people, 99% <clears throat> of the people that call in are not, it's all positive. Yeah. I've had very few trolls. Have you? Yeah, very few. I, Most, I mean, I, I catch more of your shows with Patricia, which I'm, I'm glad that I caught the other one the other night. Yeah. Uh, 191, I think it was. And that's when I learned about you coming down here. Yeah, and, and, uh, and you and I have been bouncing emails yeah, back and forth. And I yeah. honestly did not know when I was going to get down to Los Angeles. And so I had actually lost one of your emails that where it's like, well, if I ever go down there. Yeah, and yeah, then all yeah. of a sudden, oh, yeah, you're going down there. It's like, oh, my God, I don't, I don't have it. And so when you got a hold of me, it's like, okay, there's Providence. Yeah, totally. Because I just because the reason why I listened to that, because I, I, I probably catch maybe 70 percent of those ones. Yeah. And the reason why I heard that one is because I wanted to hear your guys take on the, the Las Vegas shootings. Right. And so it was at the end of that show that you mentioned you're coming down here. I'm like, dude, I need to contact. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I was it, stoked. Yeah. It worked out. And uh, so. Hey, did you hear about the the article on I think it was Yahoo as well as CBS News that YouTube is now because I, th I think this is how I originally got into your work back in 2015 when you made the clues yeah is um, you know s suggested videos that's where it all it goes down always you know? and uh, but Yahoo is saying now that YouTube is changing their algorithm because of uh, fake news people typing Las Vegas shooting hoax or right. all this kind of stuff. Right. So there I have not I have not seen the algorithm in play because it's so overwhelming after the Vegas thing happened. By the way, are we are we actually Yeah, we're going. Oh, okay. Yeah. The um after the Vegas thing happened, and we can talk about Vegas cuz I I broken this thing down six times yeah, from Sunday. I know. <laughs> but the once that happened, the amount of people making videos was so overwhelming that they couldn't stop all of it. Mm -hmm. But there have been reports. Uh, a friend of mine, well, DITRH, he mm -hmm. actually made just made a playlist of not even his videos because everyone's gun shy. Like, I will not make a Las Vegas video directly. You won't. No, I will not okay. because I know what what's, what YouTube's trying to do. And and they already hit me with warnings after I did a little little dig at the Orlando thing and a little thing on Ferguson or something else. Was it like inappropriate content? Yeah, exactly. Like they said not advertiser friendly. So, so Google is now, you know, Google is YouTube. Yeah. So Google is now become judge, jury, and executioner. Mm -hmm. And so they're saying, okay, we can tell you what's monetized. We can tell you what's appropriate. And by the way, we can copyright strike you anytime we want to where they got a hold of DITRH. Mm -hmm. And they said, look, he, all he did was literally make a playlist of other people's work. And not called, even his own videos. Not even his own videos. And they said, okay, this playlist is being taken down. And if you make another one like it, we're going to strike you. Really? And he's like, what are you talking about? You can't strike me for something that isn't mine. Yeah. And technically, they say, well... Well, they can you, do anything they want. Yeah, yeah. yeah technically, if you make a, a playlist, technically, that playlist is yours. And it's on your channel. It, whether you have <clears throat> 500 subscribers or if you have 20,000 subscribers. Whoa, dude. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. So, uh, yeah. So, it, so last night, I did a search when I read that article. I'm, I'm curious, like, how quickly these things come about. But I did a search uh, for... Las Vegas shooting hoax. Right. And the first five videos were like one from the ever trusted BBC. Of course. Uh, CBS. And right. these were all people like it, mainstream outlets saying that there are things that, you know, videos people are putting out there that are hoax exactly. videos. But it's, so it's like filtered through them first. Right. So, and then it wasn't until like, um, result number seven or eight that I saw actual ones that I've seen before. Right. And then, and then they're all on the second page and stuff yep. like that. So it's like, it's like they got to make sure to, to filter the news first through BBC, through CBS, and through NBC. Exactly. So that you have a, a worldview about whatever that video you're originally searching for is about, right? Right. And, but even then, because all those stories are the exact same, 
You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's all just, you know, okay, this is what the mainstream, this is the mainstream account of yeah. it. Most people will get jaded real, real fast. Right. And they'll say, okay, what, what's, what's the dirt? What's the really good stuff that's out there? Right. But yeah, I saw the same thing. All the major sources, you know, millions of, of uh, uh, subscribers. And yeah, I knew they were going to try that. That's so crazy. I know, right? Yeah. So, Ridiculous. yeah, I watched the one you did. You did a, a whole special show. It was only like an hour, though. Yeah, Patricia. it was only an hour. And that was Patricia's idea. And that was mostly because of the, um, the oh crap i just lost the illuminati card game yeah so dude that is so <laughs> what is that so, so that is so bizarre do you know anything about the card game at all i do i okay. do a little bit so the card game series which was initially made in the 80s Based I thought it was in the mid seventies. No? Well, the book was ba was the book was in the mid seventies. Okay, and the guys that initially made it made it in the early eighties, and it was just started out as you know just a card game. It was way before Magic the Gathering, right? And then they came out and made one in the mid nineties called Illuminati Conspiracy: um, A New World Order. Who who is the company behind this Steven game? Do you know, Steven. Send people to do the Ouija board. No, 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 different, no, different. Steve, Steve, Steve Jackson, Steve Jackson games. You just, just a nobody who was doing just, a, just, just games. I mean, like, okay. like any, and they made a, a series of like 400, 500 cards. And when they came out, nothing, nobody really paid attention to it. But as the years went by, some of these cards started turning out to be like prophecy. You know, these cards, you know, the, yeah. the, uh, the, most notably the big one was 9-11, yeah. which was the uh, the nuke terrorist attack, which looked like two buildings being blown up, mm -hmm. which is interesting because that's not what a nuke would, would go. Is go that on. what the deal is in the card? Is some sort of nuke? Yeah, it yeah, is? it was some sort of nuke, but the they didn't really have much of a description, okay. but there were, but it looked like the Twin Towers and people are going, okay. And there were other cards along those lines. But up until recently, up, we really haven't had that much. I mean, some people have tried to tie it to Donald Trump and other people try to tie it to different things. So when the Vegas card came into play, that was really, really interesting. But it seemed like, in my mind, the Vegas card should have been, if it's, I mean, it's, it's weird because it's like a woman and it's like a, the Joker and it's like, it seems like it would have been better suited if it had been like the 9-11 one where there's an actual building. You know what I mean? Yeah. But... I mean, I can see the tie for sure. Oh, you mean for Vegas? Yeah, for the Vegas one. Because well, well, think of it this way. If you're going to do, remember, which, there's a couple things that were really strange about this. One, there's only two cities in the entire deck. Yeah, that are on there. Frankfurt, Germany, and Las Vegas. And you're thinking, why not New York? Why not Los Angeles? Right. Why not Chicago? And, and oh, there's a, take, yeah. Moscow. Yeah. Take your pick, right? whole bunch of states, California being one of them, uh, New York, Florida, can, a bunch of countries, but only two cities. But what was interesting, what, and again, I didn't find it. It was just sent to me by, uh, uh, in fact, I don't, Kathy Dunson from a, a different, uh, another show on TFR. She got, she sent it to me, she goes, she goes, check this out. Because there was a website that went up really quickly yeah. about it. Because that's what anybody does now. It's like, okay, if something happens, check the Illuminati card deck. And yeah, people are going to be checking website, a yeah. lot more of this. Yeah. And they, they saw okay the the blackjack so there was the the jack of spades and the ace of spades right right which was very very interesting and the then it's like okay you think that's weird the singer that was on stage at the time jason aldean that's his initials that's his initials j and a and he had that very tattoo on his arm, which, which wouldn't be too surprising. I'm sure there's a bunch of country guys that have. So did he have the J and A tattooed on the arm or the no, tattoo of the Illuminati? The, the cards. No, not the Illuminati card, but the cards. So the Jack of Spades and the Ace of Spades. Okay. He's got okay. I thought he had the Illuminati card no, no, itself. No, no, Not the card that, itself. Because I thought that and I thought that was, that's just the, like the straw that broke the No, 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 no. He couldn't have because it was... Well, he would have well, been too. Well, I should say he couldn't have. He suppose, suppose he could have, but he was not a conspiracy guy. Yeah. So, but so you think the coincidence is all right? So he's got the tattoo on his arm, the the jack and the ace. Right. But, but then he's got the then the, the the capper was the the number of the cards, which was the jack counts for ten, the ace counts for one. Right. Ten right. one October first. That's when it happened. Yeah. And and plus, you know, the little things about the cards. I mean, little little details about the card. Other than the girl, which we're still trying, you know, just the show girl, we're trying to figure it out, which is you've got the casino sign up above. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, make sure to get a little closer. If you, if you can. Sorry, the, the yeah. casino. See, I animate. <laughs> so the casino sign up above and then the singer, the singing group down below and the marquee sign down below. Right. And then you've got the... Uh, one of the gambling tables tipped on its side and where the two dice are thrown on the gambling tables look like where the two windows were broken out. 
And it's just these little things where people are going, okay, it's way too creepy. And and it, every person I showed it to freaked him out to where Patricia's going, oh, yeah, we got to do a show on this and, and talk more about Vegas. Yeah, he was on SNL last night. Did you see that? Who? Um, Jason Aldean. They put him on SNL? Oh, yeah, dude. He did the whole prayer thing. Oh. And he did everything. Yeah, he did all of that. That's. I don't know. I mean, it, it's... I mean, a lot of that could be coincidence, but it's oh, just too, too many weird. It's just I don't know. Like I, it's just, just uh, I, don't I believe know what to make of that. I believe that that linear time is is more of an illusion than anything else. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you wanted to mess with somebody, yeah, you could inspire people. I mean, look when I when I did the clues, I, I'm not shy about telling people. Look, I just woke up in the middle of the night with that weird Jerry Maguire moment, and it was piped into my head. I. It wasn't like inspired by a whole different series of things. It was like I woke up and it was there. So, so you woke up in the middle of the night. Yeah. And what happened? What, it was what just I had the narrative in my head. It was I, I had that flip and where I said, okay, I don't think it's a globe anymore. But so, how? How did you do that? How did you have that thought? I didn't. I just did. You woke up at three in the morning and it was it was just there. It, you mean up until that point, I've been trying to disprove it, trying to disprove it, and then oh, you'd already been thinking about oh, it. Oh yeah, no, no, I've okay. been thinking about it. no, no, I didn't because like, that makes sense. No, 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 I didn't wake up one night and say You're oh, like, flat Earth, I'm going to make yeah. videos. No, but I've been trying to disprove it for so long, and then I woke up and I said, okay, I think I can shut this thing di down, but I'm going to go the other way, which is but there was nothing really out, right? There was a couple other people there doing was, some stuff, some there guy was, in Germany or um, the, Matt Boyland was was into it, and mm -hmm. Eric Dubay. Yeah, we're into it. Was he already into it at that time? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he had made his YouTube videos about two months before mine. The spinning ball. The uh, 200, 200. I don't know if he'd done the 200 proofs then, but okay. he had done quite a few things. Okay. And when he when he was looking at it, I, I hadn't really looked at his to, stuff too much. I the first guy I looked at was a guy from Germany. Okay, yeah, yeah. Where he, he was, and he wasn't even that big of a flat earther, other than he was saying, "Look, the flight paths don't make sense." Unless you're looking at a flat Earth, mm -hmm. and that's but it, sorry, to get back to the Illuminati thing. Uh, that's kind of how I got uh, inspired. So watching the Illuminati card setup, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if whoever was making the Illuminati series got some help. Yeah, who, who knows? Because there's just too many little things now. And granted, there's 500 cards, so you yeah. may, you you can say, well, this is tied to this and this is tied to this. But there's some stuff in there that's really creepy. And the Vegas one is extremely creepy because for me, not just because of the Jason Aldean and the JNA and the and the Jack of uh, you know the Jack and the Ace, but because there's only two cities. And the whole time I'm going through the decks, you know, I'm, you went through all 500 cards. I went through all 500 cards. I'm looking, I'm going, okay, there's a state, there's a country, there's a state, there's a country. And I was really curious. In fact, when I got down to it, I was like, okay, why Frankfurt, Germany? Yeah. You know, it was just, it showed kind of like a dark city. So anyway, I was interested enough that when, I, even before I did the show with Patricia, I went online and bought the remaining. I only found. Where do you get those? Like eBay or yeah, you eBay. Get them at eBay. Yeah, and so what I bought. There was a guy who was selling part of his collection in Europe, and he had six of the Vegas cards. And I bought all six because he, he was only selling them for like I don't know, four or five bucks a crack. Really? And it's like, oh yeah, I'm totally buying these things. <laughs> well, because I was so funny. Well, because it was interesting because I was going to. I still am. I'm going to give away when I do the convention in Raleigh. Yeah, I heard you say that. I'm going to give away. I've already signed the, all the cards, but I'm going to anyone that asks me a question, I'm going to give them a signed Illuminati card yeah. because why not? It'd be kind of yeah. fun. And yet now the Illuminati card and one of them, I had I had already done. There were two decks that I received from a listener, mm -hmm. and I had shuffled off most of the good ones because I knew I was going to probably give mine away. Yeah. So, and I gave I gave the the good deck to Patricia because it had the flat Earth card okay. and the NASA card and the and the Twin Towers card. And yeah. The, but I had kept you know these other cards, but the Las Vegas card I had hmm. in my deck. But what it was is, it was interesting. Wow. So the Vegas thing, get, can I break it down? Yeah, a bit? yeah, just, yeah, a, just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, the Vegas thing because people are. I, I want to get this out there because in a week from now, it's not going to be. It's talked not. About. It's not even going to be talked about. In fact, you go on this morning and it's what? Well, they're still pumping stuff out. Yes. Still. Yes. But the the Vegas thing for me, when I saw it, it, took me. It took me to a whole other level of not even outrage, just disappointment in the details. The devil's in the details. Mm -hmm, and always. The, and the details on this were so wrong mm -hmm. from 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 step one uh, in fact let's let's just break down just a few and i don't want to dwell on it too much because i yeah, don't yeah. want to talk about other things uh first first off would be uh the rifles used 
Never in a million years. You can look, I'm a shooter. I've known a whole bunch of shooters. You can ask any law enforcement guy, any military guy, any guy that shoots. If you had to do what he was going to do, right? In fact, the joke I made on, on one of the shows was, okay, if you, if the guy said, okay, I'm going to give you a million dollars, but you got to use an AR-15 rifle. I'd look at him and go, why? <laughs> why, why? Because of the angle and the height, the alleged height and the distance? Oh yeah, the distance. The maximum lethal range of any AR-15 is about 300 yards ask anybody and they're talking at least 400 yards or further plus it's a tiny tiny bullet it's a small bullet it's a small small bullet it's I means just a hair bigger than, but, a, than here, a tool. but here's the thing I, I don't understand about this kind of stuff is yeah. that if that if they put on this event let's just say for example it's all fake and it's all made up right so they put on this event and they do this don't they know that there would be people out there like you and like everybody else that thinks this doesn't add up. It's not adding up. So where, like, part, why do it half-ass like that? Part of it seemed to be a social media test, which was it's how fast, What in this case, honestly, it felt different than any other thing that we've seen so far because there were so many things wrong with it. And they pumped up the numbers so huge to where even I was going, okay, where are you going to stop here? You mean how, 500 people dead, yeah, that kind well, of thing? Well, 50, 58 58 dead and 500 wounded. Yeah. It's like, okay, do you know what it takes to wound 500 people? I go, do you, it, we're talking minimum, minimum, a thousand rounds of ammunition. Now, if, how many rounds are they saying he had? Well, he, they supposedly he had uh, Is that what, between a thousand to 1500 rounds of ammunition. But when you look at the room, there should be so many spent cartridges on the carpet. All over, right? It would take a shovel to clear a path, <laughs> like, literally a shovel. I've been in places like this where, yeah. you know, shooting ranges where you, you literally have to, sh you have to, if it's a, a smooth surface, you have to brush off yeah. with these big push brooms, all the brass that's there. And yet I'm looking at the carpet, I'm going, there's maybe a hundred cartridges on the ground. Plus there's a neatly stacked magazines. Are they used? Are they not used? Plus the, the again, the rifles are absolutely wrong. And by that, I mean, you would never go in and I'm not trying to give people tips or anything. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying that I'm not advocating. I'm not advocating what I'm doing. I'm just saying, people. look, if I had to do it, there's no way in, in hell, no way I would ever use that rifle. I go, I look, I'd use a 308. I'd use a 30 out six. I'd use something bigger. Never try to do it with full auto. Full auto heats up the barrels so fast they melt. Basically, they become unusable after as little as three, four hundred rounds. So unless you're telling me he's swapping out things, plus the, the, the number of guns in the room. Okay. Well, he did have enough. He had it like an hour before they got to him. So oh, he could sure. have been swapping out. All well, he could have been swapping out. Yeah if, yeah, if you if you believe that. But here's a couple other little things. Uh, breaking the windows, right? You can look this up. This is not secret information. The, there's glass companies that are proud of the glass they use. You know, it's like, oh yeah, we it's do this proof, hotel. Right? Oh yeah, it was completely, I shouldn't say hurricane proof or shock proof, but definitely shock resistant. It was inch thick glass. And the hammer that was in the photograph was smaller than your shoe. So it seems to me like with all of these details, like we're talking about um, the devil's in the details, with all these details, right. It looks like then, if you're saying it's maybe like a social experiment kind of thing to see what level people are gullible, like right. the, the gullible, gull, gullibility level. So if that's what it is, maybe they're just trying to test to see how stupid people are. Uh, that's all I, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. because you can't make mistakes like this. No, no, no. Some of those mistakes from a production standpoint were abysmal. They, they have were, to be built in. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't, even even a, a, a B or C level director is not going to make those sort of mistakes. They're just, there's some huge continu continuity errors yeah. that happen. So yeah, you do the test. I mean, yeah, did, did something happen? Absolutely, Do I, I think something happened. Look, I watched enough videotape. I saw ricochets going off the ground next to people. Right. So I know that shots were fired. Did I see anybody, you know, get, I, well, I won't do it because I'm close to the microphone, where, you know, you were, this jarring, yeah. you know, somebody running and you see them drop? No, I didn't see any of that. Uh -huh. But if you have ricochets on the ground, you're going to have hits. I don't care how good a shot you are. If it, it, it was a multiple shooter event, no question. In, well, in yeah, there's and then there's that video of people uh, showing that there's a fourth floor shooter. Right on the other but side, know. you know, the Mandalay Hotel is set up kind of like an, an X, mm -hmm. you know, a weird X. And, and this the other shooter wasn't just the fourth floor; it was fourth floor on the other side. Yeah. So somehow, so, yeah, I don't know how that would. So was. how is he pulling that off? Plus, there were people that uh, that claimed, you know, witnesses that claimed that there were uh, there was a, a shooter on the grounds. Yeah, I heard that one as well. Of, one of the exits. The multiple shooter event, they pin it on a 64-year-old, 
you out know, of shape guy out of shape well average shape you know yeah. career gambler he wasn't like you know huge or anything yeah but he, this was a guy that they had on film back in 2011 falling slipping either deliberately or not deliberately in part of the casino and tried to to sue for you know like you know the standard no did they yeah. really oh yeah it's on it's on tape 2011 on where, where he slips on you know how it goes it, it, people yeah. do that all the time it's like ooh, wet patch on the floor yeah. get my neck brace ready yeah so that's he is this the same guy and i'm sorry the hammer thing you can't and I, I can't overestimate or overstate the, the hammer, which is the, the, the bigger the glass, the bigger hammer you have to use. You know, I, if I had to do it and I didn't have power tools, I would go in with an eight or 10 pound sledge. Yeah, I was going to say. You know, using a small hammer, you know, this thing was smaller than a framing hammer. Never going to punch through that glass. Plus two of them. You know, not not just one, but two. Two huge you, big you holes. Would use, you would use a power drill. Sorry, a corded drill. You would plug it in and you would bore a hole through that glass. You would never try to pump, punch it down with a hammer, especially not him alone. It, Sorry, one more thing. Yeah. Which is the... Um, the I know I'm getting excited here. The uh, <laughs> the room the room service. Uh, the, yeah, that's the, what I was just going to ask. The, the room What's service the, ticket. It's like okay, the cop said, oh yeah, he didn't check in until the 28th. Really? Because one of your employees who was probably making minimum wage and had nothing to lose, he all of a sudden said, yeah, there's a room. Here's my room service ticket. It was written in Spanish, hmm. and it's like done on the 27th. Served two people. One of them appeared to be a female. You know, just what they ordered. Right. And it's like okay, so you said you checked in alone on the 28th, but on the 27th he was already there ordering room service and then with the person said it was the 29th that he got in yeah well no no i'm sorry he said i'm sorry the room service ticket was on the tw right was it the 29th 20 i think it was the Either, 27th wasn't it and then the cop Either, said he wasn't yeah. even there till the 29th. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. The, the point was the cops lied. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, who? so now the, the conspiracy world is just spinning with all sorts of different ideas, which is, okay, what happened? Was it a, was it a gun deal gone bad? What, what exactly was trying to happen? Or why did it take you 72 minutes to get to the thing? Where's the... the Where's the... All, and like all the camera footage, you know, casinos, I love that the, somebody, uh, I think it was Max Malone that, that said it. He goes, he goes, casinos have more cameras than the Pentagon and they're not for your safety. They're yeah. there so you don't rip off the place. Yeah. Right? So where is any of that casino footage from, from that night? It's not there. The security guard that was supposedly wounded in the leg that exchanged gunfire through this guy. Uh, with this guy through the door. Apparently, a story that, that most people don't even know, but the police are saying that he went to, uh, you know, that the security guard went up to the door, the guy figured it out, and he unloads 200 rounds through, yeah. the, through the double doors, uh -huh. right? But the apparently one door he didn't even shoot through. It looked perfectly intact. It looked perfectly intact. And 10 feet outside of that door was the room service cart, which should have been destroyed. Roy, 200 rounds of any caliber yeah, is going to through a door. wreck. And there's dishes. You know, the, 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 the top plate, to, you know, cover plate is still there. It's like, no, no, everything about it is wrong. I wonder if the entire floor was cleared out. I wonder if it was too. Oh, yeah, but it was the stray bullets. After you punch through the door, what, you think they're just going to magically drop into the hallway? No, they would have gone through the drywall on the other end of the hallway. Yeah. Probably another room. No one say anything about that. When did they clear the floor out? The whole thing is just... It stinks. Plus, the, the biggest question, which is why uh, the media is finally winding down on, well, I shouldn't say finally, it's a week. Yeah, a week ago going, today. A little bit, yeah. The, um, the, the big thing there is the motivation. They still cannot tie. It's like, oh, you, you heard well, early ISIS on. ISIS is now claiming. Well, they're they, claiming again. They claimed right at, the, at, oh, right at the time of the event, and now they just claimed it again last night. Really? Yeah, ISIS. Really? Yeah. Really. It, <laughs> if, 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 if that was the case, then then it's worse than we thought because if it was an ISIS thing, then ISIS was really there. Meaning if you even believe in ISIS. Yeah. Because there's no way you're gonna tell me that you convinced a sixty four year old retired gambler to just go balls out and, you know, load up a hotel room with guns and just start, you know, firing with reckless abandon. It's I, just never I think happen. what you and Patricia were talking about was was interesting because it does seem to be the case that people did get injured. It seems that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. have a friend. I mean, it's it's always like the friend of a friend, right? Friend of a friend. A friend, um, a friend of mine who I've known since I was like five years old. Right. Uh, his coworker was killed. And so I went I, I went around on his Facebook page, looked around on different things, didn't see anything abnormal, didn't see, I, I didn't see anything weird. Um, and I know there's a ton of cases like this where there's like friend of a friend of a friend had someone that was injured or killed. And so I don't know what oh, to make heck, of that, heck, you know? Oh, heck, I'm going to throw this in just a second. 
Josh back there, <laughs> his brother supposedly knows three victims. Really? Yeah. And it, it, two two wounded, one dead. So they had how? A vigil the other night. They had a vigil. A vigil. Yeah. Really? So. And when I start asking questions about it, you, it just starts falling apart, man. But what? Are the, but see, that doesn't make any sense. So, so what happened to that guy that allegedly died? Then, what happened to him? Which guy? You mean well, the, the, if, if two of your friends were injured and then one of them was girl, killed. A girl was supposedly killed. Okay, so the girl, then what happened to her? I, th- I like, think, Where do these people go? I think most of it is because what we were kind of talking about on the drive down here, which is that people love to be tied to interesting, not necessarily, I'm not going to say it's a cool thing, but tied to interesting things. So in maybe the story, and you, you know grapevines like anybody, mm-hmm. right? Six degrees of separation. Right. Maybe a lot of people, and there's studies on this, where they just take out the middle man. So it's not like I knew a guy who knew a guy. I knew a guy. Or, you know, you try to reduce the degrees of separation because the story sounds better. If, if you can. Now, I'm not saying, you know, you, you may, your friend may have known a guy. But like, oh, heck, oh, we'll, we'll take it one step further. Patricia knows a guy who supposedly was right. had an employee at the hotel. Yeah, but supposed- that's still two levels more than me. Or yeah. one level more than one, my one friend. One level more yeah. than your friend. So... I don't know. I do, but I'm sorry. Let's get, let's go back to the, the the main point, which is: Do I think people uh, people got hurt? Yes, I do. No no question. Do I think some people died? Yes, I do. Do I think 59 people died and 400 and something people got injured? No, no, yeah, no, yeah. I don't. I, that number is. I mean, sorry, 400 something injured. That's ridiculous. That's You're, 500, isn't it? Well, they, it was. Do you five, count the people was, that died? It, no, no, no. It was 500, and then they downgraded it. They, oh, you know, did they? Really? Oh, yeah. It was like five over five, and then they downgraded to like four eighty nine or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was some. It was weird. It's like oh no, the numbers been. It's like either way, you're talking. I mean, not Jonestown, yeah. but you're talking about a lot of wounded people here. And I'm sorry, and that's but, too easy. I mean, to just say that when you saw here, it, the part that bugged me about those numbers was when because remember they brought the house lights up. Oh yeah. By the way, I'm not going to let Jason, sorry, Jason Aldean off the hook here because Jason Aldean ran off the stage without warning anybody. Yeah, he didn't say anything. He, he just didn't ran. Say Word. Yeah, it's like okay. What? What? what I'm sorry. You're a country that, boy. You should be warning people. Run! Shots yeah, fired. He should have. But that's that's understandable. I know that there are entertainers yeah. that are told. Yeah. There's like, look, if you if trouble happens, you just run. Yeah. But at the same time, it is just another weird thing. You know? But but when the house lights were brought up after he left, I'm sorry. There weren't. Think of okay. We'll take just statistics here. Out of 500 people, how many are leg wounds? How many are people that cannot get up because they, they suffered a leg wound? There should be at least one to 200 people that aren't dead, but are lying around where like people are like dragging them off. And you didn't yeah. see that. You just didn't see that. Well, Plus, you saw people being dragged, drug off, but you didn't see any wounds. No. You know what I mean? You saw no. people being you know put into ambulances the same way they did at Pulse. Um, you get these people that are just being carried off, but there's nothing wrong with them. By the way, or the, I don't know if there's anything but, wrong with them. The Pulse thing, I thought there was 100 people that died, and now they, they downgraded it to 50? Is that did, right? Did they really? Yeah, because because they said it was the, the biggest mass shooting ever, and then they said, oh yeah, the, the thing... You're in, right, it was it been downgraded to 50. Yeah, yeah I I'm saw going, something on that last and night. And I'm going, wait a minute, I could have sworn you guys said like 100 people died, which was another thing. I'm going, he only fired like 300 shots, he killed that many people? No. Well, I think it's, it's like, with these things too, they like to... Ha- put little taglines on it because right. at that time it was the biggest mass shooting. That was shooting the biggest mass shooting in history. So that's like stuff that people can remember. Right. Oh, did you hear about this event? It's the biggest mass shooting in the, history. Yeah, it's the biggest so it's mass like, shooting in history. It's got to have a tagline. You know? Yeah, so they have to keep upping their game. But yeah. I, I will say this, where it, in this case, it did feel as I was watching it, because I've criticized production values for a long time since yeah. they've been doing this. When I saw this, I was going, they've in some ways, they did up their production value. Meaning it looked like they were using, you know, real rounds down there. And it looked like at the very least there were some people that got tagged. The question is, who were they? You know, or, or did they take it up a notch where it's like, oh, yeah, you hire crisis actors. And through whatever reason, you know, either deliberately or accidentally, I think it was probably deliberately, you tag a few. And, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to come up with a weird quote that sounds really, really creepy. But. And something like this, a little blood goes along the way. Yeah. I'm sorry, it goes a long way yeah. because of the degrees of separation. All you because the the truth, whether it, the truth ripples through things, and I think like you know in your case, like oh yeah, you knew somebody, mm-hmm. he knew somebody, you know, right, he, right. He, where if it comes back, so yeah, there were people that were dead. Yeah, sure. 
I mean, it, it, it makes the story more credible. Yeah, it seems more plausible than I think Sandy Hook or uh, oh, yeah. Pulse, you know. But, you know, it, it's interesting because if you have that Middle Eastern connection, right. then at the very least, it's almost like as a, as a lowest common denominator benefit for mm-hmm. the outcome of that is more signups to the military, sure. more signups to the army. So, it's a, but this doesn't have that. So I'm trying to figure out why, like, yeah, where are you, where are you going where's with the this? Benefit? Un- unless you're looking for the saturation level of and how the stories are spun and that's because yeah you could have tied this to isis in two seconds yeah it could have been so easy and they tried to but it's almost it's not sticking you know it's almost like some of the agencies were were competing with each other because the fbi was the ones that were backing off it's like no there's no connection and they do compete the cia and the fbi yeah they they, do i mean it could be that there's certain operations they don't agree on or or, uh, a friend of mine always is fond of saying what if you take just a normal everyday shooting, you know, like like this, a, just like a, a, yeah, yeah. a normal American shooting, yeah, yeah. and then you expand on it and you and you turn it into something bigger? Hey, we can use this, you know, the the old Hollywood saying, you know, since I'm down here, don't waste production value. Yeah. Well, and there's that, that famous quote, right, by that one guy. I forget part of the CIA. He said, "Never let a good crisis go to waste." Right. You know, I right. forget who said that, but. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's if there was value in it, sure, and which is could you know would explain why it took him so long to get to the room. Seventy two minutes—that's a ridiculous amount of time. Yeah, you could have driven to where could you have driven from? Vegas? You've I driven mean, from Reno. here to L.A., right? An yeah. hour. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a long time to to you know to say. And plus, if you're only shooting for and you would know where the rooms are because you could see the holes in the window. Oh yeah, nine nine ten minutes. No, there was there's there was way more to this than. Okay, so anyway, bottom line it. There is way more to this story than do I think something happened? Yes, I do. Obviously, you know, you, there's videos. The crowd did disperse. There was a concert. Yeah. And, you know, something did happen. Is it is the mainstream even close to what it actually happened? No. Will we ever find out the motivation? Probably not as far as even if it was the guy. So who knows? Maybe they'll maybe they'll turn it into something, uh, you know, later on. But the you know the attention span of the general public is so it's pretty short. It's pretty short. I, I in fact I was I wasn't joking when I said this to somebody recently. I said, look, the only way you're going to reinforce this is to have another event right on top of it. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking was going to happen. Yeah, you you something follow, else would happen. You follow that with something else fairly quickly, and to where that event kind of gets solidified. It's like mm-hmm. okay, well, this event legitimizes or helps legitimize that other event. Right, right. Or, you well, know. you know what's weird too is that like a lot of people say, well, <clears throat> look at what they're doing. I mean, it does it does cause people to be fearful. It does cause people to look to mass news organizations to get their information because right. they're all scrambling to get to Yahoo or whatever, CBS. Right. So it does foster this ability or this desire for people to look to authority figures like the news and doctors and everything else. Absolutely. So it, it does foster that. But then some people say, well, like, you know, in the conspiracy crowd, they'll say, well, look at what they're, what laws they're passing. Right. And so all of a sudden you'll start seeing these posts while you guys were all freaking out about the Las Vegas shooting, these laws were passed. But my thing is like, if they want to just pass a law, what, just do it. Because right. like, what what are you and I going to do if they pass a law? Yeah. I mean, I get there's value, but that can't be a, a main thing. Because no. they can just pass I mean, a law, they can do anything they want. The only other thing that I that I lump these into, which I've kind of, we, and we can segue into Flat Earth after this, which, which is kind of what all the space stories do, which is the drumbeat of you're on a globe. Fosters that idea. Yeah, which is it doesn't matter if you read the story on what the face on Mars or the rings on, you know, what's happening on the top of Saturn or is Pluto reclassified as a planet you know, or is it still right. a, a rock? It, th- they don't care. All they want you to do is look at the headline and say, oh yeah, face on Mars, you know. Mars must exist. Mars must exist and therefore a globe exists. The, with a shooting like this, at the very least, even if nothing else makes sense, it's still a fear beat, which right, is right. you need us. It's dangerous out there. Yeah. You live in a terrifying world, but we don't want to make it too scary. Right. You know, I mean, right. honestly, if you you don't want to say things like, well, it was a legitimate ISIS attack because then people are going to stop going to rock concerts. And that, uh, you know, hurts a lot of people's yeah. bottom. There's view. a fine line. You, you know, you want the, the signups for the military, but you don't want too much ISIS. Right. Yeah. It's it's like, again, yeah. Like you got to walk this line. You know? Yeah. It's a controlled attitude of the people. But at the same time, look, you don't want I mean, this will hurt. The, the the concert industry for a while, yeah. especially outdoor concerts. Yeah. Now, if the if well, something, if uh, up, 
Sorry, oh, no, well, I was just going to say, I mean, um, there was something going on with um, Ariana Grande, isn't she? Oh, like a, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was an indoor concert. That was an indoor concert, but the explosive, supposedly. Oh, was outside? Was outside. Okay. And you heard it, and it was also after. It was, so it, again, there's an old internet saying, you know, between internet nerds, which is if there's no video on it, it didn't happen. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the In fact, it used to be about Photoshop where it's like, you because internet nerds be all the time, is like, oh, yeah, I got this girlfriend, I got this girlfriend, you got a yeah. picture of you got a video of her. You don't have a girlfriend. Yeah. It's like Kip from uh, Napoleon Dynamite chatting with there hot babes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly like that. Chatting with hot babes. Where you know full well, I'm sorry, the, the country western concert where, where people are drunk and holding cameras around, there should have been a lot more video there anyway. But Ariana, Ariana Grande, the, you were talking about a demographic here where the phones are pretty much surgically attached to their hands, right, running right. at all times. And yet nobody was anywhere near that, that bomb. Yeah, you that know, was bizarre. Nobody, and that was in New York? Is that where it was? No, I think that was in... That was... London? That was Anybody? In, somewhere in Europe? Was, yeah, that was somewhere. Oh, there you are. Different. Manchester. Uh, Manchester. Manchester. Oh, really? England. England. Well, you, well, you know what's starting to really freak me out is this ability for software and, um, and different tools to be able to manipulate sound and now audio and now video. So right. have you seen those those keynotes by Photoshop? Have you seen those? It was like a keynote uh, speech that the CEO of Photoshop was giving, much like um, uh, Steve Jobs did with Apple. Yeah. And it was a keynote and it's basically showing how you can manipulate software and sounds um, in the same way that you can do that with images in Photoshop. So they're, so they'll take a recognition of you saying um, a handful of words. Um, oh, this, right, right, right. I've and they this. can actually get the tone right, the intonations right. And yep. so it doesn't sound like you're, you're, it's like garbled and it doesn't work. So they got the intonations and so it's actually saying something that you never said before. Oh, so that's starting to get weird. That is starting to get know? weird where uh, one of our guys uh, in, in the Flat Earth community was talking about, look, he goes, we, we've got to break this thing open soon. Because if we don't, they're going to reach a technological level to where we won't know. We won't be able to figure it out. Now, personally, I think that's all, I, I think that's not exactly true because it still comes down to the human element. He did a video where he was showing uh, uh, some people that were supposedly floating in anti-gravity. One was handing a hat to somebody else. And it's all done with VR technology where they're watching another monitor and they can see where everything is. Okay. But the monitor... Oops, sorry. No, it's all right. Hopefully, I didn't break anything. <laughs> no, it's where, okay. see again, I'm flailing. <laughs> where the uh, the hat was in the wrong place, the monitor had screwed up, and the guy grabbed. Oh, I've seen that. Grabbed the hat and put it over to the side of yeah. the of the ISS, and the the hat was still there. The hat was still spinning, and then he finally figured it out. He's looking at the screen, going, "Okay, screwed up." So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, the what you were talking about also was the, I'm I'm pretty sure they've already done it where they did they've been testing it with like some of Obama's speeches because mm -hmm. his face was easier to do than than Trump's for whatever reason mm -hmm. where they actually had uh, Obama come up and do a speech you know walk up to the fake podium the entire background was green screened but what people didn't know was that his face was green screened that the whole speech that everything about his face you know, look that one up if you get a chance i think i've well, i've seen some of him speaking and it was dubbed from somebody else so someone else was on a different part of the screen saying things and his voice was or his lips were moving like he was saying what this other guy was saying right is the, that the one you're talking about uh, yeah sort of the um it was one of them where but in this case yeah obama was talking he, he was given his he was given a speech and he wasn't actually up there. And he, I think they were trying to judge as, okay, let's see if anybody in the social media, because now that's the most valuable thing about it. Now you can, just, you can find out real quick if everyone's buying it. You can find out if it, what sort of believability is out there. Yeah. It's so yeah, we've gotten to... Uh, we're getting to the point where you can't really believe anything you see on TV. And I'm wondering too, like even people putting out, I mean, if I were a part of the establishment and I wanted to perpetuate an idea, right. I would have people that would create videos that would serve my my sort of worldview right and I, and I would get you know regular people to do that so like what it, it's almost to the point now where not only can you not believe the mainstream media but you can't believe even just other people that are doing things it's right. crazy and it's also not just what you see but it's what you don't see mm -hmm. we tend to fill in the blanks we've been doing this for a long long time uh, with the space programs for example you know i've said many times where there are no movies Die, you know, made about the, the moon landings, but we fill in the gaps with all the science fiction that we've watched over the years. Uh, the Ari Ariana Grande thing was a, an interesting, it was kind of like uh, the phenomena, the Seven movie uh, phenomena. With Brad Pitt? Yeah, well, there's no yeah. violence in Seven at 
all. We filled in what they were telling us. Oh, so, really? Yeah, you watched it. Because I watched that when that came out. Other, no other, than, other than Kevin Spacey getting shot in the head at the end, there's no real violence wow. in that movie. It was all the storyline. It's like, what happened here? Well, I'll describe it to you in excruciating details. And your mind is going to fill in those imagery, that, that imagery for okay. you. Oh, yeah, you see the victim. You saw the post thing. But the whole movie was about, and the reason why it worked is everybody fills it in differently. Everybody says, okay, yeah. this is the worst way I can envision this. And that's why it worked. Look at the Ariana Grande thing, things you don't see. Nobody saw the explosion. You heard something, but yet there was no video. You, you, in fact, I, I had somebody who was so outraged because they said, look, you know, there's something wrong here. You know, something's not adding up. And a woman said, no, all the girls that could have filmed things, their phones were, were destroyed in the explosion. Literally all of them are going, really? All those phones? Because those phones would actually hold up better than a human being yeah. in some cases. And you'd have to think there'd be one or there'd two. There'd be one or two. Yeah. And, and those films would be extremely valuable in any media outlet. Not to mention you know, outlets like TMZ. Mm -hmm. They'd pay through the nose for it. Oh, yeah, for sure. So don't, don't tell me that the RER, you know, the, but, it, but it worked. It's like, oh, yeah, girls blown up. Uh, at a concert, and but it still didn't get that much traction, you know, and, and then it faded away. Yeah, these Pretty. things just fade away. That's that's the most bizarre thing is they fade away so quickly. Yeah, truck yeah. truck drives over some people, and then we go, we go to something else. Yeah. And it, look, the Puerto Rico thing. Once this the Vegas thing happened, and you'd think the Puerto Rico would be a bigger deal. I mean, you would we're think considering what a billion dollars in property damage, the island really doesn't even exist currently right. as a country, or yeah. you know, even part of uh, of our colonies. And yet, as soon as the Vegas thing happened, Puerto Rico, oh, yeah, you can, you can yeah, take, it's completely just yeah. dead in the water. Yeah, yeah, you, you can know? take your your relief efforts, and, and <laughs> even though Tesla, and here, here's my segue. Uh, yeah, sorry, not Tesla. Uh, Elon Musk uh -huh. comes out because he's been releasing stories in the flat Earth that have been so ridiculous. That, I didn't know that. Really? Well, no, I'm sorry. Not no, on the flat Earth. Not on the flat Earth. Uh, sorry, the space stories that he's been releasing oh, okay. have been so ridiculous that now he's just making up. He's just pulling stuff out of his butt. Can I swear on the show? Sure. Okay, he's pulling stuff out of his ass. <laughs> where that's not really swearing, yeah. which is which is just like he said. Oh yeah, I can completely solve the power problems of of uh, going to Mars. No, no, no. The power problems of Puerto Rico. He actually oh. said that the other day. Oh, you got, you know, on top of the other things. Yeah. So in addition to think of the stuff he said over the last calendar year, and none of it has come to pass. Got to remember, this is the same guy that said he was going to send two people around the moon and back in the next nine months. Two tourists. Yeah, it was by 2018, wasn't it? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, by the middle of 2018. Yeah, yeah which we're coming up on, right? Right, it's only not and, that far away. And it's like, okay, who are they? Who are the pilots? Who, what capsules being used? What rocket? What's the booster being used? You're not giving us any details. You're just throwing this out there. People are, yeah. But it's not a public company, so it doesn't seem to affect him karma-wise. Um, he also said that, yeah, we're, we're going to do Mars. You know, a few years after that, it's like with what? But you know what's interesting about that is like a guy like that could make those kind of claims, but as long as he's doing really cool things like Teslas and Hyperloop and things like that, right? You kind of just forget about the the major claims. You know what I mean? So as long as he keeps making these amazing inventions, as long as the Tesla car is out there, yeah, basically. Yeah. Oh yeah, so as long the, the as he keeps series. doing other yeah. stuff, you kind of forget about it, like his his claims. You know, you kind of do, but well, I know so, people's, I mean, people's attention spans. Well, okay, you want people's attention spans? How about this? The Google uh, X. SpaceX, SpaceX Prize, Google X Prize, which was being announced this year. And you, you know anything about that? No. Yeah, no. nobody does. Yeah. Where, <laughs> where they announced at the beginning of the year, Google said, Google said, oh yeah, we're going to give $20 million to anybody that makes a, uh, a probe that goes to the moon and beams back pictures. 20 million bucks to okay. anyone that does it. Five countries signed up for it. You, you know, the, all the usual suspects, right. United States, the Japanese, the Europeans, the Israelis and the Indian, uh, okay. East Indian. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. And, and it, but here's the catch, you have to launch by December 31st of 2017. Okay. That's coming up. That's coming up in That's like coming a, up, a month right? and a half. So what, and I, I called this one, I call a lot of things, but I called this, I said, there's never, you were gonna kick that can down the road, I'm just waiting for it, and they did. A couple months ago, they said, oh yeah, we're gonna, the, we've extended the deadline to the end of March 2018, before you have to launch. I'm going, yep, that can's never, you're never going to launch. So the idea is to launch a probe that will land on the moon and take and pictures. And pictures back, right? Okay. Where, and what you can't do, I mean, you should get a member. The, the camera technology is so good and so cheap 
that you should have. I mean, honestly, you buy a box of cereal, you get a 4K camera in it. Yeah. It's that it's that yeah. easy. There should be the 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 rockets should be bristling with 4K cameras, and you're not gonna you're not gonna happen. They're gonna, they're doing the, gonna do the same thing with this as they did with the hydrogen. You guys should know this down in California. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen fuel cell cars. Yeah, you guys yeah. are all running on those, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're all yeah. using those. We're no, all using them. Nobody's using them. And the reason and the the reason why they even were a thing for people history buffs is because the oil and gas industry they they you know if they're going to replace something with something else you have to control it right well it was the only thing they were really good at other than oil and gas gas hydrogen gas they were good at doing that they can make all the hydrogen gas they want <clears throat> problem is that if you try to make that into a car those cars cannot run hydrogen gas at cold temperatures yeah, that was a big stickler, right? Yeah, and it's not like diesel where, you know, you have to use like a, a glow plug, you know, where you're up in Minnesota and you have to heat up your diesel right, engine in right. the morning. No, there's nothing you could do to to make these things run in cold weather. It's, you're driving and they will stall out on you and that's it. So it they realize it's like, oh, we can't solve this, therefore, and they just went away. All, you know, because you guys had hydrogen fuel pumps and the, you know, mm -hmm. George Bush did the whole thing. Yeah. Never, never happened. It just disappeared one day. Yeah, it's so weird. I mean, why make the claim? Or why put it out there if you're never going to follow through with as it? As far as it's more incriminating than anything. As, the, as far as the space thing goes, they're doing it just to buy them a little more time. The the, the globe beat. That's all they're. They've run out of things to. The, all the usual stuff is gone. So you know they can't say the face on Mars anymore. Nobody cares. Or what's on Saturn. Or let's talk about Pluto. Or right, oh right. yeah, we had a something crash into Jupiter. Whatever it is, they've got to make up stuff. So now they're going to use uh, an independent space agency. Because the, because up, up until now NASA has been releasing most of the stuff, right? But now you have SpaceX saying, "Oh yeah, in fact, that's all." Where's Virgin Galactic? They, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. What, what they, happened? They they've kind of fallen off. SpaceX is the their their golden boy, their their champion. Mm -hmm. So all SpaceX has to do is come out every six weeks to two months and release a story and say that uh, we're you know we're going to do this we're going to make and but the claims are so outrageous it's like oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna go to mars and, and this sort of we're gonna send tourists around the moon we're gonna solve this we're gonna do this it's like no 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 you're not you're just you're just making these claims and people see the story and they and they think the, the the one that was most recent i think was last week where he says and, we, and i this one really bugged me because i've heard this for years and that is we're gonna make a rocket plane that can take people from la to china in 39 minutes and 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 we've we've heard this you know the the yeah it's the, been out there forever the mythical rocket plane mm -hmm. that's going to get up at a certain altitude and go really really fast and come down and it's going to shave all this time off but what killed me at the end was he goes and we're going to do it it's going to cost no more than a, a a premium economy seat i'm going you who said this who was the guy that, that was elon musk that was elon that musk? was elon musk he just said this last week I'm, and i'm reading this and i'm going so they're just letting you apparently they're just taking the 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 restraints off of him said so, you know what whatever headlines you want to make you let you let them fly and we'll we'll spread them out there and nobody questioned it you know it's weird it's like what is so elon musk a guy like that or a guy like um richard branson right you know um they seem like these great people and all this stuff but what like what's going on are they part of anything do you think you don't have to be the, in fact, when I you know eventually we're going to have to talk about some flat earth stuff, <laughs> which is the when you get to a certain level, like the president, you don't have presidents don't have to be told everything. Presidents are, are very low, actually, on the level of clearance because yeah. you want them. And this is kind of a key thing that's throughout a lot of the stuff I say. You got you want them acting naturally. You right. don't want anything weighing on them. They had a problem with the Apollo astronauts because they went through this great. You know, the, I do believe in the Apollo program as far as the training. You know, so, you know, make them heroes. The the whole movie. You know, the right stuff. Right, right. Which is really just an ast astronaut recruiting program, which right. was just like, all right, this is what it takes to be an astronaut. But at the end of that, you took these Boy Scouts, these really really good guys, and you ended up telling them that they couldn't go up there. And that weighed on them psychologically where they, they turned into recluses, they crawled into bottles. Yeah, so, if you look at the footage of Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins and all them sitting, oh, after, sitting there at that press conference in 72 yeah. or whatever that was. Yeah, the international press conference. I mean, yeah, they was, didn't look like three guys that no, just landed on the moon. No, I mean, not, they could have, but don't look. No, really not a chance. Like These it. guys should have had permanent smiles on their face that could have only been removed by plastic surgery. Yeah. They were <laughs> absolutely, they were, they were just down like this because they, you remember, they had gone through, it's one thing to feel guilty. You know, everybody knows this. Good people know this, which is you don't like taking credit. You can take credit for a few things here and there, yeah. right? But getting a, a ticker tape parade 
multiple ticker tape parades where you know in your honor and you haven't done anything that's going to weigh on you because eventually you're going to think somebody's going it's all it's in fact it's a hollywood thing where actors you know people are going to figure out i have no talent people are going to figure it out yeah. same thing with these guys people are going to figure out i didn't do it and that i didn't do what what the papers are saying that i did and that weighed on them to where now they just realize, okay, every astronaut that, that we say is up in space, we're just gonna make them Air Force employees and we're going to uh, make them sign disclosure agreements and they're not even allowed to ask the questions. You don't have, you don't even have the security clearance now to ask the questions. What do you mean, as, a, as an astronaut? Yeah, as an astronaut. So you're, you sign off, at, remember, these are Air Force guys, these are military. So they sign an agreement saying, okay, we can basically order you to do anything you want, and now you can't even ask to be briefed on why. You just have to follow, like anything. Just you follow, follow procedure. Yeah, I mean, it's an old drill sergeant thing. It's like- I, you know, wonder, it, I wonder if there's a benefit as well as um, like, um something that happens to them in a bad way. So like if they if they don't follow that, someone in their family gets killed the, or are they also given money? Is that the bribe? You, you, the, the old saying is you give them two briefcases. You know, one has money in it, the other has a gun in it and you make them see both and you say, you pick. You don't, you, you try to lean away from it. You, you, you offer this briefcase first because you don't, you don't, no one wants to be negatively, because you know, again, you're not going to act naturally. Right, so it's right. like, look, we're paying you well. You're not hurting anybody. Or you give them a false story. It's like you're doing this for, you're helping save the planet. It's for national security. Yeah. You, you know, lots of soldiers, you're not paid. In fact, it's an old, old military saying, you're not paid to know why. You're only paid to follow orders. Yeah. And so when it comes to um, somebody like, Elon Musk or Richard Branson, who, you know, these are high members of the, of the company. Do you, what, is there a benefit to telling them? Yeah, because there's a certain element. They have to believe what they're saying when they're giving speeches. Exactly. So, so now, and, and humans can read that. Now, if you, you know? tell them something vague, like uh, it's for national security, most people will buy that. So same thing with, um, uh, let's, let's take, go away from uh, Virgin Galactic and SpaceX and look at any major uh, petroleum company owner. Because remember, none of these guys can go down to Antarctica, right? right so the right. Antarctic Treaty forbids any company of any kind doing work down in Antarctica. But if you're the head of British Petroleum, you should be able to go down there. You have gobs and gobs and gobs of cash. You own all sorts of people. Right. If, if you want to frack in my backyard tomorrow, you could make that happen. Yeah. If yeah. you really Enough wanted money. to. It wouldn't be tough to do. So you go to them and say, look, you can't go to Antarctica. And you, you can't complain about it because of national security or whatever. So that's really a good blanket coverage thing. It's There's some security things down there. I'm not allowed to tell you about it. In fact, this conversation never even happened. You should feel special that I'm even having this conversation with you. Yeah, and yeah. then he keeps in his back pocket. And then he probably tells some of his Zec VPs. It's like, yeah, man, can't go down there. And that also helps them. It's like, in case anybody from below and lower ends of the food right, chain right. want to ask, they're, it filters down enough to where it's like, yeah, don't Everything's ask. believable. Everything's believable. So the people that are actually creating, I remember, it's so funny, like, how indoctrinated you are as kids in school and stuff. Yeah. So I had a classmate of mine whose father worked at NASA or for, the, I forget, maybe he was subcontracted. I don't know, but sure. he brought in all these, or she brought in all this like, you know, space food and all that kind of stuff, you know? And, uh, and so it, it's, it's just crazy. So like people like that, that just work, maybe they're, if they're subcontracted, it's easy to see that they would be in the dark, right? If there's just subcontractors, but if you're working for NASA, if you're actually building these capsules and stuff, like, okay, so they're not in on it, but at some point somebody is. Somebody is. Use the but, movie, and I know this is but dating. But they're really building these things for what? For the appearance. The, 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 the story that I like to tell, and actually I'm going to steal a little bit from uh, Matt Boylan, which is you uh, sooner or later, and, and by that I mean not that long ago, you have to show people a picture of the Earth from space because, you, you know, we never had one. All yeah. you is showing, you know, globes, globes, globes for 400 and something years. Right. You had no picture of the Earth from space. But I can't just hand you a picture of the Earth because you, what's your follow-up question? How'd you take it? Yeah, how'd you get that high? How'd you take it? Right. You actually have to make a believable rocket program just so I can hand you the picture and you can say, oh, okay. You, and and I, you say, how'd you take the picture? And I go, oh, well, that rocket over there. So and that rocket's really big. That rock is really it big. It's yes, like a lot of slow press. motion. Hey, the big USA I saw on the side yeah. of it. It's great. Rah rah go team. Right. And that that will work for the most part. But ninety nine percent of all NASA employees, and I, I've gotten phone calls from people that you know they're related. Usually, it's not the NASA employee themselves. Yeah. Although uh, JPL did call in to a show, a radio show that I did after I got off the air. 
the show kept what, going for another 30 minutes. What do you like, mean JPL? Like the, uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. No, but someone from JPL? Some from JPL mean? actually called the station. And How do you know? Because somebody called me right because somebody was listening to the show after I had hung up because they wanted to every once in a while I'll do a radio show and then you know there'll be, there'll be time after the, the show ends right. where they're saying you, you want to hear what they may have said about you. Yeah, it's yeah. like he hangs up it's like oh that Mark Sturgeon he was a freaking dork you know yeah, don't yeah. ever believe where he says so but they were still taking calls on this show because they want it's easier rather than have the host say it you know let's, let's, let's see what the audience yeah, yeah, thinks yeah. of this guy since Mark's gone. And JPL calls up and they said, it was really interesting. They, they said, yeah, we just want to, you know, let you know we're listening out here. You know, we're just like, okay, why are you listening in the first place? And we'll just let you know the earth is round, right? And, and we've got pictures to that effect. And, and he goes, and the host, it was uh, Clyde Lewis from um, Ground Zero. He goes, really? Because I'd love to see some of the pictures. Yeah, we'll, we'll send them over, you know, and they you know, supposedly exchanged information after the show, never sent Nothing. anything. Well, that's like, I mean, it's so, it's so trite, you know, it's like those tweets from Buzz Aldrin. Did you see those uh, last couple yes. of days about oh, yeah. the OB and this uh, rockets going up in the space? Like, oh, it's called curvature and, you know, it's called orbit. We go around the earth. I mean, it's like, come on. I mean, if the, if the, glo if the globe is true, that just sounds so mundane and stupid. Yeah. It's still, it sounds stupid regardless. Agreed. You know what I mean? The, um, there was something that, that, uh, okay, two things. One, uh, this will give you an example of the people that I, that I knew, but I didn't bring it up to. One of the guys I uh, that was literally my next door neighbor, wasn't a friend of a friend, literally my next door neighbor, I took care of his cat when he was on trips, yeah. usually to schools, teaching. He was like the NASA engineer. He was, his name is Wayne Ottinger, O-T-T-I-N-G-E-R. You can look it up. He's pitch, you know, pictures between him and Buzz and uh, Neil Armstrong before he died. And he was like the garage mechanic for NASA. He was one of the guys that built the LEM, the early versions of the LEM. And you know he was very proud. Walls just bristling with plaques and awards from all the different wow. things. Career NASA employee. I mean, career okay. career engineer. He knew nothing about nothing. <clears throat> he was absolutely in the dark and couldn't have been more proud about working at NASA. Why not? Yeah. It's why insane. would Why would he have to know anything? The only guys that have to know are the telemetry guys. We aside, aside from the guys that give the telemetry guys their orders. The only I won't even say the word grunts. The only guys that make less, you know, that aren't a VP or something, right, uh, are the telemetry guys because it comes down to the data, which is, you know, where where is this thing? That has to be falsified from somewhere. Where, you know, up in the air, uh, space, wherever you want to call it, that data has to be falsified from somewhere. Uh, the movie that touched on it, and I love the scene from that movie, uh, Capricorn One, mm -hmm. which was, the, the, you know, one of the engineers, lower engineers, figured it out. Well, he thought, he didn't know what was going on. Right. He's going, he's going, look, the telemetry data, he ran his own program. He looked where he shouldn't have. He got himself in trouble, and he looked, and he goes, look, the telemetry data doesn't make sense. And the second he said that to one of his superiors, you could tell, even though they didn't do it, say it during the movie, it was really, really cloak and dagger. I mean, it was sinister the way they did it. You could tell he was being followed from minute one. And he gets to a bar uh, with his, one of his friends who was a reporter, and they're sitting there playing pool. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, seriously, it's one of the creepiest scenes. You've got to look into it, which is, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, I goes, I don't know. He goes, the signal couldn't have been coming. I'll just make up a number from 60 miles away. You know, it couldn't have, it couldn't have. And the reporter goes, wait a minute, what are you talking about? And the second he said that to his friend, the phone rang at the bar. It was a fake call for the reporter. The reporter goes to the bar. He goes, he goes that's nobody there. He goes back to the pool table, gone. Done, no the, more the, conversation. The, yeah, the drink's still on the table. His friend is gone. Nobody's really? seen him. And then when he, the, the, even the creepier part was, again, yeah, again, there's power has no power. Some power has no limits. Where he goes to look for him as an apart at his apartment. There's an entirely new woman living there in the apartment. All the magazines have the correct labels that she's been living there for years, oh, and really? he never existed. He was like removed from time and space hmm. because that you you don't want you. They were closing loops, and while he was in the apartment, that even the best part, while he was in the apartment um, checking things out, they cut his brake lines. And so he almost crashed. Now, in reality, they would just would have shot him. Yeah. But the, the point is, is that only those guys, the telemetry guys, need to know. The rest of them, they can, you want to turn wrenches, you want to build fuel systems, you want to design insulation for a capsule, you can. Yeah, it's so weird, though, because you think, I mean, I know part of your Flat Earth Clues has the, you know, why would they lie to us, you know? But, I mean, 
it, it must be even deeper than we would even know. Because there's yeah. a you know there's the obvious answers of like worldview. You're you know it, this affects religion, affects uh, evolution, yeah. affects worldview big time. It, it's it's you know some of it's simple, some of it's little has a few more facets. But one of the ones I like to lean on is that men and it's men. Sorry, not women back there. Which is um, men rarely relinquish power voluntarily. Meaning, one, men, there's a reason, you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts, right. absolutely. When men get to a certain level of power, they don't like letting go of that. So a perfect example would be uh, with the World War II conspiracy, which is what I talked about in, on a few different things, which is the, the Nazi, Nazi Germany was trying to take over the world, obviously, and they were going to do it. It was going to happen. They were just finishing up with the Soviet Union. They were just going to bomb England into the ground. And the whole point was they were going to take the United States without even firing a shot because there was a lot of German citizens in the north and going, you know what? Let's just run double flags. You guys are our friends. Hey, Holocaust member wasn't a thing then. Right. So these guys weren't that evil at the time. It was like all they knew is they were conquerors. And the men in power in the United, it's like in the United States going or England or all the other countries like, look, we don't want to give this up. What can we do? What what can we do? And it's like, OK, Pearl Harbor. You know, America will not enter the war without yeah, without, without some pretense. without some sort of revenge. And right. everyone knows the story. Pearl Harbor was attacked, and literally a million men entered the uh, voluntarily entered the service the very next day. Mm -hmm. So multiply that by a huge amount, because remember, you can't be the ultimate power in the world if you're not the ultimate power, able to do things that no other country can do. Well, if there's somebody, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if there's you, how men in power would use this information, the first thing they would do, like anybody, again, you're probably a good guy, maybe you wouldn't do this, but <laughs> how could I use this information to my advantage? Which is, or will it hurt me if, if the, you look at the positives and the negatives about this sort of information, and between the academic, the economic, and the spiritual side of it, mm -hmm. That meeting was really, really quick. I mean, 10 minutes long, which is there's a possibility that we could lose hold of the whole, we lose control of the entire thing. Uh, Are you talking about still World War II? No, no, I'm talking about Flat Earth. Oh, okay, no, right. World War II, you were going to lose the entire no, thing. Yeah, no, yeah. We'd be speaking German right now yeah. if Americans didn't get into the war. But when it comes to, to Flat Earth, if it is released back then, there's a chance that that we may not be able to control everything in there because remember like the the one of the clues where i was talking about confinement people will be preoccupied with we they will have questions the general population yeah, will have questions get we edge. can't answer yeah the, the entire i joked but i wasn't where uh the people will entire congregations there'll be cities that would be built out there because they'd be like they'd be fascinated with the whole thing it's like okay what is it who's it for you know entire new entirely new religions would would start up on it yeah it's, it's it's really bizarre when you think about it because like you know what are they trying to hide i know that's part of your clues too you know do they know more maybe, than maybe maybe they know? don't know maybe maybe the unknown again if sort of like the the core of the earth thing Mm -hmm. which is every high school book that shows the core of the earth, it should just have a big question mark in the inside. Yeah, but yeah. people, science doesn't like leaving those out there because people will just keep asking it. Yeah. They don't want kids in every classroom all over the place saying, what's at the core of the earth? What's the core of the earth? It's like this way they can just say, well, it's, it's probably that. And then after a while, they don't even say probably anymore. It's that. Yeah. It's like, it's, really? It's fact. It's fact. It's, you know, you, you yeah, I know. And in, in you can look it up on Wikipedia. It's like, well, we expand, we speculate a little bit, Yeah. but we don't put that small print at the bottom of these diagrams. Yeah. Same thing with the, the questions. I mean, do you know how many people would ask questions and say, we want to be, you you know, we want to know what's going on out there. We want yeah. to know. You wouldn't, You can't have humans running amok. No. You know what I mean? You can't have people questioning things. I mean, you can see how, you know, people doing even flat earth experiments, people are, are just all upset that, you know, regular people can't do experiments. They're not scientists and, and that kind of stuff. Right. You know, so the very th ability for people to question and do experiments is looked down upon because you don't have a white coat on. Right. So I guess if you look at the tentacles of all of this, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like there's anything really direct where it'd be like, well, why would they do, you know, do this? But you can look at all the tentacles that relate and get tied to industries like science and, and, uh, and industry itself for the economy and mm -hmm. stuff like that and controlling people. So it's not like one thing, but it's multiple things 
that are tentacled off. And the that foundation was laid so long ago. And I don't think it was just by us either. I, I do think that whoever built this place, whatever, whatever you want to call it, uh, laid those in there to deliberately because to, to keep us acting naturally. Right. But the foundation was laid so long ago that, and science has gotten such a foothold that they wouldn't dare, they wouldn't dare back away from it. The, the joke I used was uh, the Catholic Church. We, you know the, the version which was what if the catholic church found out tomorrow that the virgin mary's name was actually susan well, susan yeah i've heard yeah now. if if would they tell anybody no no of course they wouldn't the narrative is too far along what they don't know won't hurt them we're not going to rewrite everything just for one name you know and that's just a name there's a if science the foundation of science so many of the different disciplines are forged on the globe right right it, it, every you know they it wouldn't be just yeah astrophysics and astronomy would be wiped out forever right but the rest of the physical sciences would be in, in real peril i where, mean this affects satellites it affects you know satellite radio satellite tv uh, i mean if it, it it trickles down to so many different industries and there would eventually and this is the, the dark side i don't usually talk about which is eventually people after the shock and awe wears off yeah if people eventually it's like wait some people lied about this. Wait, yeah. how many people? And what else do they lie about? Yeah, what else? Yeah, that's yeah, that's the big that's one. That's the rabbit hole. That's the rabbit hole. Which and I, I warned, uh, you know, certain people. I said, look, that's where you get into a dicey proposition because if because your credibility just gets just crushed. Uh, a perfect example of that would be the uh, the Enron scandal, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, Enron wasn't about uh, just Enron. In fact, that that isn't really the big story. The big story was that they convinced a one of the biggest accounting firms in the world and paid them a million dollars a day to cook the books mm -hmm. and once that was found out you know even though it was just a small group of people in this giant accounting firm right. that accounting firm was gone yeah because the whole point of an accounting firm is integrity you are paid to tell the truth about money mm -hmm. and they weren't so if all of a sudden the uh the scientific community was told that you know or it was revealed they you know they weren't telling the right about the globe everything else would start even the the legitimate stuff would be you know other than the boiling temperature of water at sea level everything would be put into question yeah i know it, it affects everything so they they don't want to do it they, I mean, would you if you're what are your thoughts about like uh how this relates to spirituality like what is your because a lot of people i was talking with uh, you know dave murphy of course from, yeah 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 um yeah of course you would know him um, i know yeah, I was talking with him, and he was, you know, forty years atheist, and now, now he he's a some sort of a believer. Right. But I think he believes in the Old Testament. He doesn't believe the New Testament's accurate or true. Mm. And so, um, how is this affected? Because some people become Christians through this. Like, what's your spiritual? The, 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 do you have any? Oh yeah, absolutely. I was raised, and I, I've said this on many things. I, I was raised in a strong born again Christian home. Mm -hmm. uh, where and on a rural island where the community you know if you weren't in this part of the community we weren't ostracized but it was the, it, i was lucky enough that it was the cool clique yeah so all the cool kids in school it was rare you know it was, all the cool what, kids were christians yeah pretty much oh my gosh that's so weird so, <laughs> that's so opposite <laughs> yeah it was no yeah it is not it was not normal well it was we had a really great youth group leader and so yeah i do sunday school and vacation bible camp and youth group yeah. and the whole nine yards yeah and and it was it was really really good, but at the same time, remember I grew up on a rural island, so I didn't even know. Honestly, I literally do not believe that people in authority lied until I got to college or right after college when I watched JFK the movie. Really, you know, Oliver Stone's you know one of, I consider his masterpiece. Wow! So you were just all full uh, board, just authority figures always. Oh yeah, the truth. why, looking why out would for anyone you? lie? It's like science, great government, yes. Used car dealer, maybe not. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was one thing. But yeah, one thing. I mean, you knew about the little lies, right? Yeah. But Even I'm not that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it, that's where I was, and then when then I realized like okay, people lie, and then I started going down little rabbit holes. Remember, in the early '90s though, the internet wasn't even online yet. Yeah. Yeah. So you looked at a few things, you waited for other movies and documentaries, like they weren't really coming out, and then the internet started taking off, and and uh, then I realized that that oh yeah, the world wasn't nearly as shiny and and polished. 
polished. But it wasn't even until like YouTube came out that you could actually have people creating videos. You know what I mean? Like, right. I mean, people could do videos, but they would have to host them on their own web servers, and right. that was weird. You know? And, right. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. And when, but as far as spirituality goes, I fell away from it when I went to when, I, when all these things happened, because I wasn't in the the the, the cozy comfort of the, you know the island Christian community. Right. And so you know, I didn't go to church. I didn't really do anything. You know, the Bible just gathered dust. And then when I got into this, honestly, really wasn't until I got into the whole flat earth concept, which all of a sudden things, because you do, you have that moment where eventually once you get past the technical issues of it, once your mind clicks around to where you can get through the whole, okay, here's what it looks like. And then you have those hundreds of questions like, well, what about this? And what about this? And how does this work? And how does this work? Once you can get all past that, then all of a sudden you have this weird moment of, holy smoke, somebody had to build this. And yeah. then, then it snaps over and you're going, okay, if it was built, well, then it was, there's a creator, right? Yeah. And then, then you have to rationalize in your head, okay, are we talking about intelligent design? Are we talking about the handprint of God? You know, what, are we talking about God's footstool? What are we talking about here? And so then I realized, yeah, that, that brought me back to where I... Do you, you go know, to church now? No, but... I can't find, uh, it's tough for me to find a church that, because I'm in kind of a different place with this now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a church that, that I, I, you know, sing, singing in the choir and hymns and, and the daily message. It, honestly, <laughs> I, I, I hate, not, I'm not trying to downplay it. I'm just saying it's not enough anymore. Well, you know, for me, it's like, I don't even necessarily, because the church is, has almost been hijacked by science as well. Yes. Because you look at the church and it's like, for the longest time, the church would teach that the earth was flat. Right. Because the Bible mentions so many times yeah. of, of, you know, the four corners of the earth and all this stuff. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, I don't know, Galileo, Galileo comes along and people start talking about the globe and all this stuff. Right. And then the church goes back and says, well, those are more allegorical. Right. It really is round. So then it's like you have the church sort of like waffling on what their stance is. If they, sh what they should have done is just stick with one narrative their whole way through. They should have, but like you know? any, the, the clergy or politicians like anybody else, you know, they, they forget like, Honestly, back then, I probably would have done the same thing, which is like, well, what are we really losing here? You want to be relevant. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you yeah, know? I mean, it's, it, I get what they're saying, but it's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt all the other stories. So yeah. who cares, right? It's it's not the the overall, it's like, yeah, let science do their thing. Because remember, like anything, like heck with even flat earth, how dangerous yeah. could they be? Yeah. And yeah. so then science starts ramping up and then all the other things, because what science started doing after that was they started creating they start claiming things and i what thing in fact it could be a t-shirt and that is uh, uh science is just uh, magic without mystery which is as long as it's repeatable science claims it right. so it's like okay whatever i'm doing in front, of, or in front of you right now this may be total like the double slit experiment oh my god i that one just throws me double slit experiment is absolutely the closest thing to magic even now 2017 right should be magical right, right. But because it's repeatable Science says, oh, yeah, it's absolutely scientific. Quantum physics, we own that. But they might as well just, you know, stabbed a patent on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's like, really? Explain it. Explain to me how things do not exist until a person's actually looking at them. Yeah, through scientific methods. Through scientific method. Yeah. Once, if it, if, again, the, the microwave oven, 99% yeah, of people don't even know how a microwave oven works. We've been using them for 40 years, mm -hmm. right? But because, you know, we perfected, well, sort of, there's still hot spots, and they never do cook right. Yeah. But because yeah. of that, they, you know, science has laid claim to it. So slow Slowly but surely, they started ramping up. They started building this this foundation of what they claim to be. It's almost like they were building their own books of their own Bible. Right. So I mean, it is a religion now. It is a religion. It. it is a religion. It, it is a religion where they, but they base most of it on. Uh, so frustrating because they base most of it. They can, they can, yeah, they can lean on things like the boiling pot tem temperature of water at sea level. Mm -hmm. Fine. But anybody could figure that out eventually. Yeah. Fine. You had to invent the thermometers. So you could measure it. Yeah. We get that. Yeah. Don't start talking to me about quantum physics and dark matter and light years and millions of light years yeah, and yeah. things that the average person can't do, which is, uh, I should segue the way that into my, you know, my big flat earth mantra, which is, Water is wet, fire burns, you drop something, it falls to the table or floor that appears to be something akin to gravity. These are things you and I can test right now. But when it comes to the shape of the earth, that's something you're told. 
plain and simple. It is literally something you're told. Nobody, 500 people have even claimed to have gotten high enough to see what the earth really looks like. How do you say 500? 500 total in human, in human history. take, Take your pick. And most of them have been Americans and almost, I think 99%, 95, 97%. Our Jaronism did a thing on our military, oh, okay. which of course they yeah, would yeah. be. You're going to militarize space. But the thing is, you're told these things. And since you're told and because children don't believe in lies, we uh, we believe it. You know, when you're told you're told this when you're six, you're told this when you're 13, you're told this when you graduate from high school. Yeah, and if you're told by authority figures, you believe it. Why? Yeah. Why would you believe it? And not to I'm not picking on people that may be listening to this and going, holy smokes, this guy's gone off the rails. He's insane. No, no, no. Think about it this way. It's not your fault. You were born into this. It's not that you getting here was nothing. You got to remember it was your your father and his father and his father's father going back 20 something generations. By the time you got here, there was no one even close to being alive or even on a family tree that even remembered when the earth was flat. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, what chance did you have? The the Again, which is why I did the... Um, uh, the movie The Village by M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, it's a good movie. It's a great movie, yeah. but people don't understand the, the overtones of it, which is yeah. kids will believe anything you tell them. Right. You put those kids in the middle of a wildlife preserve and said, oh yeah, by the way, it's the early 1800s. Why would they, why would they not think yeah. that? And yeah. what's spooky about that scenario is when the parents that put them there that knew the secret, when they died, and the kids that grew up and that next, all it takes is a generation or two. Once the last parents just knew keep the secret, perpetuating the lie. Yeah, well, yeah, but the thing is, it's legit at that point. Yeah, because none, because the kids don't know because they 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 had no idea. Oh yeah, we're in the 1830s, and you know then yeah they may crank up the calendars after that, but they have no idea that they're in modern day, and you know because we again we believe the world that is presented to us, and nobody why would anyone question it? And up until a couple of years ago, nobody did. On, except for the cracks in the armor that have been coming up. It's weird how you had the hit to do this, these videos and, um, Eric Dubay was doing them a couple months before. A couple months so before. So generally the same time. Yeah. And maybe a couple other people. But it's just weird how like all of a sudden this whole movement of people believing in the flat earth, yeah. just if you look on Google Trends, it's like spike. spike oh, yeah. You know, it's massive, oh, like the, the amount of people searching for this you stuff. Saw, you saw that commercial uh, by, what was that new phone? The Google Pixel, Pixel? 2. Yeah. Where the very first question that was on there was, the earth, is the earth flat? Yeah. And they did, that's no accident. Okay, one of two things. Either we've got somebody at the inside, which is very, very possible because right. 90% of our community is closet. Or they were looking, it's like, okay, show us what the, the top trending questions are for 2017. And that would have been there because the, the community is just ravenous. Yeah, when it's crazy. They, I mean, I'm, I'm typing in, you know, 100 to two times, a couple hundred times a day. Is the earth flat? Is the earth flat? Is the earth flat? How many people search for it? Because I know you can search for like how many results come up, but how many people search for is the earth flat? Do you know? I don't know, but a lot. I mean, the the numbers I like to give are, are usually on the videos, which was, you, you've heard this one, yeah. which is, you know, 2015, if you did a search for just flat earth, you would get, and this isn't number of videos, although it's, it's funny because uh, um, Robbie Davidson actually mentioned to me the actual number of videos that's out there. Uh, just for Flat Earth. They have Flat Earth in the title. We actually broke a million videos, physically a million videos, which is a lot, which means you're never going to get through them in your lifetime. Yeah. But if you typed in 50 um, Flat Earth into YouTube at the beginning of 2015, you came up with 50,000 hits, roughly, right? Search results. Okay. If you type it in this morning, I think it was at 19.3 or 19.4. I hadn't checked it since I got here. 19.4 million. Yeah, it's as opposed to 50,000. Yeah, 50,000. It's a massive jump. There's it's no there's no argument why the the calls I've been getting from, you know, different radio stations and different producers and different people that want to talk that it's now can I exp- yeah, Netflix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we lost that deal. Is there a reason? Can I explain exactly why it's being allowed to happen? No, I've got some ideas. Some on people it. say it's a controlled release. Have you heard about oh, that? Yeah, could be. I, I mean, don't know. It's, I have said since 2015, I said that it feels like it's part of something bigger, which is this is a way to open up. It is the ultimate open-minded test. You cannot th- tell somebody something like this it, it, any other conspiracy, this is the one that cracks your mind wide open. Right, right. But once you're open to that, you might be open to everything. Right. Like, for example, uh, you know, what other races, you know, I, we've done so many science fiction movies on it over the last several generations. Oh, well, I'm sorry, other um, civilizations. Oh, I see. You yeah, know, yeah. could you finally introduce an advanced civilization? So we've talked about, I mean, how many series and how many movies have we talked about this? And there's right. an advanced civilization out there. 
how, maybe you had to condition the people to a point where you could do it. And we're at the perfect place to do that. Not, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, it's just, it's just wild because with all of this information, if you could snap your fingers and everyone on earth would believe that the earth is flat. Right as opposed to globe, because what is it? It's gotta be 99% or more, 99.9%. Well, you'd, you'd think. Right? Okay, let's just yeah. say, whatever, you can snap your fingers and everyone believes the earth is flat. Right. Um, you snap your fingers and, you, and everyone thinks that the Las Vegas shooting was a hoax right. or whatever. Um, so if someone believes all of this stuff, at some point it's gotta turn into a power control switch at some point you've got to use it there's got to be action that happens because just all of us knowing that what good is all that? of us you're right all of us knowing that wouldn't what what in fact yeah that was like every 10 emails or phone calls that i get it's one of those which is okay why do i care why why would it matter if the earth is flat around if, if it's amazing listening to those people because they, they say they're you know, asking I, you gen genuinely genuinely yeah they'll say really? why does oh yeah at 10 percent of the people that i deal with they in fact all have people maybe even tonight gosh that's so uh, weird well it's weird to you but think about it this way they're locked into their life so they say well you know my wife uh doesn't like me my kids don't listen to me i hate my crappy job that's not going to change if i found the earth is flat yeah and i go well that's not exactly true. It'd be kind of like me telling you that you're adopted. Yeah. Right, yeah, right yeah. now. And it's like, you're going to go, whatever. I'm not adopted. I'm going, okay, fine. You, you're you not going to care because you're in, you're in denial of that right. until you snap over. Because you're going to be like, my life doesn't change. You know, even if I was adopted. Well, until you are. And then you are. And you're, then all of a sudden, the, the ripples go all the way back through time to your right. childhood. And you start reevaluating every conversation you have with your parents to that point. If we fed, you're, and you're right, the powers that be, this is being, this is being allowed to happen. No question. It and has I, to be. It, I've been watching it literally since day one. And the reason I know it's being allowed to happen is because I'm being allowed to do it with almost no restrictions. Meaning. Other than a couple of videos here and there get taken down. No, no, or I've had, had a single, single flat earth video taken down. I've had, I've had a couple non flat earth videos oh right shooting right. videos that have been like well that's not advertiser friendly but not one single flat earth video has been taken down and not only that here's the two big ones because these are software fixes stop you could plug these holes in two seconds one is you could go into youtube and you could write it wouldn't even be a page of code it says if anybody makes a video with earth and flat in the same title you don't recommend it to anybody it never happens it never show also never shows up on well, your that's auto. what they're starting to do no, I well, that, at least according to Yahoo and yeah, CBS, I've I've heard the rumors that they're gonna they're trying to do it with other things, and I've heard the rumors about the flat Earth thing, but I have not yet to I've yet to see it. So Ooh. they've seen it. I've seen it with other topics. That's but, what I meant. But yeah, flat yeah. Earth keeps rec getting recommended. Not only that, why if I'm looking up stuff on JFK and Pearl Harbor, why is flat Earth even showing up? That's as, probably as, how I found you because something happened where I was searching. You know, I was watching some documentary and. You know, you see a flat earth in 2015. It's like, what the hell is that all about? Everybody you know? says the same thing. In fact, I cannot tell you the amount, I cannot count the amount of times that people have said, because autoplay was one of the brilliant things of YouTube. Yo, where yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, I'm watching a video while I'm doing the dishes. I don't even have to go over there. It's just going to cycle new yeah. videos. And all of a sudden it's doing flat earth. And you're doing your dishes going, wait, what is he talking about over yeah. there? <laughs> that, that can be stopped in two seconds. And it's not. It's being allowed. In fact, it's being promoted. The other side is uh, the Google side. Well, that's scary. If, if you're a part of the establishment, that's scary because the average person isn't going to search moon hoax. They right. just won't. Right. Um, but for suggested videos... That's bad for them if they're allowing that to happen. I mean, if they're allowing it to happen, it's obviously for some greater Unle reason. Yeah, that's the great. That's yeah. on the surface level, it's bad for them because then you have people stumbling into this with no um, searching. On the surface level, yeah, yeah. like a, like a great chess game. Mm -hmm. It look, you know, you've seen the movies. It's like you know, you're being. It's like, oh, I got him. I absolutely got him. The guy thinks it's like you know, and then it's like, no, you were you were dead the second you moved that piece down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the other side was was Google, where it's like, okay, you should never. When you type in the Earth or is the you know into like especially if you type in the Earth, uh -huh. should not at the top say is flat. It should be bumped down. It should be way at the bottom of that so list. So do you think that's being it's being released on purpose or it's definitely at least being it's allowed to happen? Like the wheat being separated from the shaft. Yeah, it's being it's, be, like, yeah. it's like creating the dividing line. Creating the dividing like, line. Like okay, these guys are if they want to call themselves truthers, okay. No problem. I mean, with us that, that look at things from a different point of view. Right. And then 
What if they're just basically creating like a database of, okay, these are the guys that we can get to, and these are the guys don't touch because, sorry, that <laughs> these are the guys don't, that's kind of weird that I was saying don't touch as I hit. <laughs> 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 but, uh, like, these are the guys that we can go at. Like, these are the guys that. We They're basically go trackable. Yeah. People yeah. are known. Are, There's profiles are, written up about them. and separated now, you know? Yeah. 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 And it's through social media, through YouTube, through Google, through what? Uh, everything. Yeah. Right, he, right. He's right. Social media has changed everything in this regard. In fact, I was, I was wondering, it's like what it would take you, you to set this thing up to where whatever event you're going to do, or however way you're going to turn it, you're going to want to have as much control as possible. And I initially thought, okay, it's the internet. The internet's, you know, and then it's high speed internet. And it's like, no, 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 it's social media. And then it's like, live no, no, streaming. Yeah, now it's streaming. But now it's, now we pretty much pinnacled everything we can do, which is the, the phones are now tied into everything. And the, everything is instant to where, you know, the old criminal um, thing that they, they do in movies, and that's let's get our story straight, right? Right, right. Now, beforehand, it took you a while. I mean, look at the Roswell thing, not to go off on a Roswell tangent, but it took them days before the Pentagon even realized what the heck was going on. Right. And they call back, it's like, what are you doing? Shut this thing down. So today, that would be minutes. Minutes, literally yeah. minutes. And it's not just newspaper. You know, back then it was newspapers. It's like, okay, we'll retract the story and make another newspaper yeah, story. Yeah. Now it's literally, we can get get almost everybody on the same page right away to where it's so overwhelming that, yeah, if you fed 99% of the people the same message right there, then what couldn't you do? Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's weird, like a weird concept to think that they would allow the internet to happen or not know that the internet, because a lot of people say, well, they didn't know they allowed the internet to happen, yeah. but they didn't know the internet was going to be what it was. I, I can't believe that. No, no, no. There's no, no way. Any... The, t the technology that's been released to us has been, you know, full well. I mean, you know, the military always has the best stuff. They right. have the best toys. Always the most advanced. Oh, yeah. Why, why wouldn't you? You're spending the most money. It's like, why should we give it to the population? You only give them the stuff that can help the civilization as a whole. And I think initially they thought, okay, you know, with, with the internet and high-speed internet, eventually we're going to have to deal with this stuff. But since they had so much advanced warning, you can, you know, you got some smart guys working up there you can yeah. come up with a way to turn it to your advantage and oh for sure i mean they had i mean hillary clinton had people commenting on blogs you know right so it's like yeah i mean yeah. they could definitely use so we're we're at that stage and i've been waiting for the other shoe to drop which is okay what do you we we pretty much there's two things that that have to happen the the whole flat earth concept has to reach a critical mass that that hundredth monkey effect right. that that turning point to where, remember, nine. I firmly believe this, nine out of every 10 people that are in this community don't say anything to everybody, anybody because they don't know. They don't want to look like a freaking loon. Yeah, yeah. So it's this weird secret because nobody wears badges. and People are putting stuff on YouTube, but they're not talking to their family about it. Right. You know right. I mean? Or uh, there's some people that, well, I mean, uh, countless emails where people, for every one of us that puts out YouTube videos, how many people are out there that are watching them and they want to, but either can't technically figure out what how they want to do it or, again, scared to death. Remember, we lost two people at the conference, two people to, you know, that were going to be speakers because they announced they were going to be speakers what? For, for the conferences coming up in, in Raleigh. Oh, you, don't, you haven't heard about this one? No. Yet? Well, I know about the conference, but I didn't know the two people dropped oh, out yeah, because yeah. they we had two. Them. We had two people yeah, because they said they were going to be speakers. One was Amy Denise, and the rumor was that her family just gave her all sorts of hell. Because you know, it's like, holy smokes, you're actually speaking at a Flat Earth conference? Are you wow. insane? But the other one was Brian Mullen, who was one of the guys who was heavily involved. Wow. Which was... I still, still want to know what happened. I can tell you what happened. It's, it's not, it's well, not the mean, big... No, I mean, I get that he stepped back because of... He stepped back. No, I, I, we, can, we can talk about it. It's only six yeah. weeks away. The um, and this won't even happen until yeah. after that. Yeah. The this will probably. Be oh no, no, that's fine. No, it's fine. I don't, fine. I don't care. Yeah. The um, Brian Mullen, in his case, he the, because we do have a faction of people that do not want us anywhere around. It's not just the scientists. There are science advocates that are trolls that will not. They are stuck in this stage of denial. They will not snap out of it, and they right. want us gone. And they figured out there was a loophole. I didn't know. 
You know, it's one of those things. You mean as part of this conference? No, no, not the conference about people's professions. So like if you're an accountant, you're supposed to live up to a certain standard because remember you're licensed as a CPA. Right. Whoever licenses you, they don't own you, but they own pretty much your behavior. Yeah. You, yeah. You're not and your supposed opinions. To, yeah. You're, yeah, exactly. So when a structural engineer comes out and he becomes a co-sponsor of a flat earth conference the first flat earth conference in the united states in the history of the united states yeah well apparently you can there's an ethics board that's tied to engineers and you can not only is there an ethics board but you can report to them anonymously and trolls figured this out and they i will not name the trolls and oh, you know who these people are? I know exactly who they were. Wow. And they contacted the ethics board, and it took no time at all. It's one thing to say, oh, yeah, you made a couple YouTube videos. It's a whole other thing if you're co-sponsoring a conference because you're saying, well, it, you're building structures for a living, you yeah. know, and this has to do with, you know, there's lots of geometry involved and in, in, in the earth and all sorts of scientific things. You know, they consider them a, kind of a cousin of science. Right. And they thought it was a bad thing and he had to back off. I mean, that's crazy. People that we actually don't take the curvature into account. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't, it, it was, anyway, the point was is he had to back off and I I feel bad because I'm not even allowed to, um, I mean, I can't even mention him on certain things now. I cannot promote his videos. And, you know, he had pull, pulled because, down his- Because yeah, his whole career's tied into this yeah, thing. Yeah, his whole career's now. tied into So I can't even, it's like, I'd love to, I, I thought the guy, he made a great series of videos called uh, Balls Out Physics, where he went into it. And we're talking about a structural engineer. He was not joking around. He's going everything, he, you know, he saw it. He's going absolutely everything is flat, you know, and, and he but he said it in a very well spoken way, and he was getting a lot of traction. And the the science advocates went after him, and they wanted him gone. And and I, and some people say, oh, you know, oh, you should be lenient. Is you know, it shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be too hard on the trolls. It's like no, if the other coast, the other guy that was doing the the conference, if he was involved in another group, they would have tried to take. They want the conference taken down. They they always have. They they think it's an abomination. That's so and, crazy. I know. And so anyway, so Brian, you know, wherever he is, I hope he's listening. I hope he finally gets, you know, justice involved here. You know, but. Yeah, it's crazy because like, you know, most people, you, you're never going to be taught sides of stuff in school. Right. Because, you know, science is going to win out and science always wins. So you're, you're going to be taught evolution, not creation. You're going to be taught the world is round instead of flat. Or you could be taught, I mean, it seems like they should present ideas on the table. Right. Instead of just one way is the only way. I remember when I was sitting in class in sixth grade, uh, looking at pictures in my textbook of these dark-skinned uh, slaves pulling these sixty-thousand-pound stones from five hundred miles with ropes sure. to build the pyramids. I remember those pictures. I, 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 I remember. And that so it's like it's. And that inspired me so much to where I actually went to the freaking pyramids. It bugged me so long. You know, it was the running joke. Uh, it was a Stephen Wright joke where he goes, you know, who, who financed the pyramids? You know, pretty sure it was a guy named Eddie. You know, but I, I go there just just to see it for myself. Just to you know, sit in front of these things and go, did we build this? Did our technology or, or you know, it's like no, not chance. And the the people, God bless them, the people that live in Cairo now. They are not descendants of anybody no. that, that built this place. They just got gifted it. They just got gifted it. They, and, and I, who wouldn't have? I mean, you're the pharaoh doing reconnaissance in, in a desert, and all of a sudden you find this place, you look around, there's no one there to take credit for. It's like, oh, yeah, we're, yeah. we totally can. Because the structures back then were worth so much more symbolically oh, yeah. to where it turned them into gods. I mean, these things were, some of them, the stones of Baalbek were like 1,100 tons. That's like yeah. 2.1 million pounds yeah, for one it was, stone. It was ridiculous. You look I mean, at this, you stand by the Sphinx and you know full well, it's like, oh yeah, they took a lion's head and they carved out a, a, a pharaoh on it, which is why the head is so small compared to it. I right. mean, it's not ridiculously midget small, but it's small. And you're going, okay, so why was there a lion, a giant lion statue next to these giant pyramids and what about the guy that claimed that he figured out the secret of how they built the pyramids oh ed lee actually showed and built coral castle yeah i've oh, been yeah, there yeah, yeah to that in coral castle yeah in florida um ed lee skullman apparently figured out how they did it yeah. and he the stones he he moved were anywhere from 30 to seventy thousand pounds and he was allegedly five foot one and 120 pounds oh, yeah. coral castle is a great example of hidden hidden things you know yeah, it should be it should be a massive tourist attraction oh and, yeah and it's not have you been there i uh, no, i haven't but i've seen enough documentaries on it it's mm -hmm. like a, yeah i mean i i get the whole the how whole long concept. ago were you in in egypt 
Uh, six years. Really? Six years ago. Yeah. How I, long were you there? Uh, a couple of weeks. Just a couple weeks. Did, did the did whole you? Nile, the whole Nile cruise. Did thing. you find it was safe? It was. I it knew was. It I was one of the last people. It was seven years now. It was just before. It was literally months before it got ugly, and then they had to abandon all the tour boats. The, yeah. Everyone, everyone that was involved, as far as the American tour boats goes, they sold it all off. A guy who owns a business just down the street. Um, it's like a meditation kind of center. Mm -hmm. uh, he took a tour there, and he ended up getting shot. I guess. Oh my he, lord! He died. Yeah. They, 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 there was these uh, helicopters or planes yeah. that were flying, and they were shooting down on people because apparently they thought he was in a wrong area or something, and they killed a bunch of people from the sky. Wow. My uh, my good friend uh, Heba, who was a tour guide down there, she was doing you know that was her job. You know she was doing an American tour, and she cut that thing. She got the feeling what was happening, and she got them to the airport just before the whole thing just just went nuts. I mean she was scrambling like you know get him in buses and it's crazy and get him out of there. Dude, how is that that guy? Do you see that guy who leaked the video? Who apparently he climbed to the top of it. And breathe security and yeah. took video. Do you see that? Yeah, I did see that. What a trip! That huh? was that was really really yeah. That Pretty was interesting. surreal. Oh, the the images. other thing, the, the people again, the average person doesn't know about the pyramids is that's not what they were, what they look like. They were they had these fantastic marble overlays on casings, them. Yeah. casings. But marble was more valuable, so people you know stole the marble. And of course, the big mystery, not to go off on the pyramids too much, but the big mystery is where are the freaking three headstones. The capstones. Yeah. Where are they? And yeah. what were they? You know, were they? Yeah. And why were they uh, removed? Yeah. And what? Yeah. No, more than that, who? Well, you know, they they were big. Yeah. Why were they removed? Well, you know, were they made out of solid gold? Yeah, maybe. Yes. But if that was the case, where's the legend? We don't even hear the you know the rumors of you know who you know, they were smuggled away to B Bavaria. Yeah. Or Alexander yeah. the Great. There's no rumors at all about them. No, there's not. They're just they were just gone and they're. they're well, to me, there. the the pyramids and stuff like that, it, it all ties. It's all same. You know, to me, as the flat Earth, it's just like this mystery of something that is other than what we've been explained. Exactly. And, you know, I got into this whole thing. Um, it, by uh, my mom's um, diagnosis with cancer. And so I started learning about alternative and natural cures. Yeah. I shouldn't say cures, but you know, alternative yeah. treatments people uh, can have that reverse people's cancer. And so when I started looking into, dude, they're not telling this, they're not teaching this in pharmaceutical school and medical school, they're not teaching it anywhere. And I mean, each cancer patient is worth, I think like close to a million dollars, like $700,000 yeah. from treatments. And so if we're lied to about that, and if people are in fact reversing their cancers, then you see the tie of business, right? Yeah. Yeah. And industry and regulation and legislation. So then you have that. So then you start going, you know, it affects history, science, religion, everything. Is so as you start looking at these different pockets of, of civilization, you start realizing that nothing is the truth in any one of them. Yeah. What am I, and what, flat earths are just one of, of everything else. But it's, for me, it's one of the top, at least one of the two top, top ones, with the other one being what happens life after death. But you're absolutely yeah. right. The, the saying is things are rarely what they first appear to be. Yeah. And that you see that in just about any aspect because institutions look how many how many different roads you want to go down facebook is a lie <laughs> all right <laughs> when you go into facebook and you see all these wonderful lives that people are living you know because they yeah. all, all they do is put up these great images of, of oh this is great and you know their life could be collapsing yeah, around instagram them. same thing yeah imploding lives and yet that's not we like to put our our best foot forward institutions lie governments lie people heck when i was doing the hoa thing out, out in colorado I told a few lies from time to time because I thought it was the best thing for the association. You know, it's like what they didn't, I honestly, I used that line in a meeting or two where I said, what they don't know won't hurt them. Mm -hmm. And that's how it starts. It's a slippery slope. And it's, it's, it's human nature to yeah. do that. So it, it, it tightly aligns with how we're wired. Yeah. Especially when you start gaining power. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, I mean, it makes perfect sense that they would lie. Because if I were in the, if I were in there, I would probably lie too. Because no, no one wants to have their institution or their livelihood or their careers crumble and no. their whole life taken away from them. So if you have to lie in order to preserve that, then you yeah, know that's what humans do. As much as look, and, and I don't want to. I'm going to use one of your lines back there, which is uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. You know, said one of the most arrogant things I've ever heard in my life, which is science is right whether you believe in it or not. Yeah, I remember that. And it's like okay. But that's not that's true only if you can say that science has 100% integrity, and they don't. They're men like anything else, and men can be bought, men can be corrupted. We've seen the 
this with just about every, and I don't want to list off too many products, but I mean, the, the big ones, you know, like lead, ga- lead paint, lead gasoline, DDT, which was, right. which almost killed our, Amer- you know, our yeah. national bird, by the way, yeah. almost wiped it out. Uh, you know, asbestos, even now, you know, there's asbestos suits being, being settled. It's like, oh yeah, great product. But if you work in the factory, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the big one that, you know, I still will harp on people about, and I've actually saving a secret one for Neil if I ever meet him face to face, but the, um, the doctors that took and the scientists that took all the bribes and told us that cigarettes were good. Oh, right. You know, right. Were fine. Yeah. And they, they, you know, you cannot tell me that science is right when you always. have the yeah always you cannot tell me that it just doesn't, doesn't were want. you when you were growing up you said up until college you didn't start questioning stuff so you kind of just bought everything as you sure. know, packaged to you 80s well the 80s was just a you know a decade of you know just walking around yeah. with stars in your eyes totally just you know the, the colors and and it wasn't like drugs colors it was literally the clothing <laughs> the uh it was yeah. it was a great it was a great time so yeah no i did not believe in uh in the the sinister style si- si- i'm sorry the sinister wow you know what the dark side of life yeah and the the movies the music it all was you know it it pushed forward that narrative and so really when, until the nineties came out, that was, you know, then it started getting a little darker. I mean, seriously, look at the music and, you know, grunge all of a sudden happened. And yeah. Then this sort yeah. of, this darkness came in and, uh, this but, rebellion from glam rock and all that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Glam yeah. rock died as soon as Nirvana came out. Yeah. Literally. There were guys that canceled tours. Are, are there any events that happen that where you learn about and you think it's a conspiracy, but it's not? Mm, very few. Uh, in fact, I I feel bad because you know as a conspiracy guy you you suspect everything now. Yeah, because when this thing happened the other day, this yeah. uh, Las Vegas, my first thought was like I was just kind of like I was really skeptical when I first thought it. Before it would it would take a little while for me to oh yeah okay there's a lot of weird inconsistencies and now right. it's like I, I look at it with an open mind first right before I'm sort of programmed from the media. Right. But you, were there things that you like you, you, you thought were conspiracies that, uh, that weren't? N- th- I don't think other than not really. I mean, there's been a, yeah, a couple odd ones, miscellaneous ones, mm-hmm. but what it did was, I mean, I've, I've always looked at conspiracies with an open mind, meaning I, I, I try not to judge them. I've got my favorites, uh-huh. but there's some, I don't like, you know, like uh, Elvis still being alive. Eh. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't really do anything for me. Yeah. Uh, clones, eh, maybe a little bit here and there. But I mean, most of them, what, what's happened now is though, is that Flat Earth has taken everything else and put it down to a second shelf yeah. to where people will say, hey, what about this? What about this? And I'm going, yeah, you know, I'll listen to it. One thing, it, so it's done two things. One, I don't judge anymore by face value. You know, it's like, okay, Bigfoot had Elvis's baby. And, you know, I've got video to prove it. It's like, okay, I, you know, before I'd be like, I'll get out of here. But yeah. now it's like, you know what? Show me the link, whatever. I'll, yeah. I'll take a look at it. But at the same time, I'll, I'll look at it and I'll say, yeah, but it's not flat earth. That's what I'm saying actually more and more now. It's like, look, yeah. it's not, that's the, those are the videos. Well, you, the, got, you got pretty into the Las Vegas thing though. I did, but only... But it's not going to last very long for me because yeah. it was it was too easy. It was it was like look, it was it was right up my alley because of ballistics, because of uh, crime scene, just breaking. It, it was just too blatant. It was just kind of fun to mess with. Right? Yeah, it was yeah. fun to mess with. It's like oh great, they're going to use the whole JFK thing. You know, really, yeah. there's a lot of parallels between this and the JFK. It's like look, second shooter. Right. Uh, Patsy didn't mean anything. Uh, you know, like uh, JF uh, Oswald supposedly shot a cop on the way to the right, movie theater. Right. This guy shot a security guard and then went back in his room and waited for the feds. You know, all these little, you know, they just, and it, plus the Oswald thing didn't make sense. And then he died, but, you know, Oswald died in a different circumstance. Yeah, so, yeah. so, yeah, I latched onto it, but that was but just they because, only, it's like a little spark kind of a thing. Yeah, it, it was a little spark where I was like, it's like, it, I didn't. It, it irked me because logistically I was angry at the production. I was like, come on, make it a little. That's that's really, and <laughs> yeah. I know you got to dumb it down for the lowest common denominator. Right, I get that. Right. But don't, and I, I'm not telling them not to insult me, but maybe that's where I was, I was going, oh, kind of like movie formulas. You watch enough movie formulas, you know, you yeah, see enough movies, yeah. it's like, okay, here's they what's going to happen. Same this guy's going to, but that's where, yeah, so it's not going to last. Apparently, this uh, one of the ladies from Sandy Hook. Is now tweeting that we need gun control after this Las Vegas thing. I just wanted to make you aware of that. 
<laughs> uh, all right, all right. Yeah, I know, you right? Wanna, you, here, here's one. Here's the story that that drove me nuts, and I think it's only about three days old. Where almost immediately, in fact, Young Turks, that's a, kind of a big YouTube. Type yeah, of thing, yeah. They ran a story on a guy. I used to like them. Who voluntarily, literally, right afterwards, and he called the media to do it. Oh yeah. Gave away his guns to the police, and. When you're looking at it at face value, and he caught a lot of, you know, because he was dumb enough to, to kind of give hints on where he lived, and gun owners were very, very upset with this. But when you looked at him, it's, again, things are rarely what they first appear to be. One, he was British. He was a British American. Really? And yeah. And British people do not, you know, do not do much with guns. Yeah, they I mean, it's a very guns. anti-gun place. Yeah. And two, he only had two guns. One was a Ruger 1022, which was tricked out, which was not very expensive at all. And one was a handgun. You know, the whole picture was he's literally, you know, handing the guns to police. They're both smiling at the camera. Yeah, a little photo op. A little photo op. And I'm going, okay, you fine. You gave away two guns. You're not even, uh, you know, from here. So what? And you, he'd go down to a range. And really, the 10 22 is literally a, just a little 22 caliber plinking rifle. Yeah. Fine, he shot targets. And and even the Young Turks, and they're, you know, they're, they're not, they were on his side. They're going, yeah, probably, you know, it's it's a silly piece because you're basically asking, you're, you're being right up front. He was, oh, yeah, by the way, you should give away your guns. That's basically what the story was. Yeah. Giving away your guns is a good thing. It's like, really? And it was crazy, too. Um, I don't know if you heard about this, but a couple months ago, the Young Turks received like $20 million for production co- for uh, production and promotion and stuff like that uh, from uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign. Oh, that's lovely. Isn't that crazy? That's lovely. So and they, they, and they hate Flat there. Earth, too. They did yeah. a thing on them on Flat Earth a little while ago, and, and they're not on board yeah. by any stretch. So I, I, I don't mind. Hey, I wanted to ask you, what do you think about, I, I know you've mentioned this in some of your videos, um, craters. Craters on the moon? On, well, oh, on just the moon on or on earth. Yeah. Oh, like I know you mostly, talked about they could be something from underground, but. No, 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 no. What Cra- do you think? Craters are, they're, they're real, but you don't have to do them during the civilization. Meaning, um, okay, well, let's talk about two, two things. One's moon craters. And we'll talk about it, and then we'll talk about Earth craters. So moon craters are fascinating because they all, when you look at them, remember, they're, they're nice, perfectly round, decorative circles, which means they came in a 90-degree angle. Find me a moon crater where it's this skidding runway of a, of a path where right. it actually runs into something sideways. You should see, look. It, it, there should be all kinds. There's, it's random out there, right? So there should right. be all sorts. The moon should be a freaking mess, but it's not. It's like it was perfectly set up to where you shot meteors into it. Uh, at 90 degree angles it's like okay well decoration Shouldn't it kind of look like a targeted gun range? there you go exactly yeah, like a yeah. targeted gun range yeah. where it's there's skid marks everywhere right, right and as far as the earth goes the, yeah there's craters here you know gulf of mexico and that big thing in arizona and, mm-hmm. and stuff like stuff in south america but you don't have to do it and again i'm i'm saying this from a builder's a design standpoint you don't have to do it during the civilization you know, in fact, it's a great reinforcement tool. Put a couple craters in there before the civilization is introduced, and therefore it's like, oh yeah, possible cataclysm. You know, it, it, what killed the dinosaurs? Yeah, that's how Graham Hancock's whole you know thing is about is craters. Yeah, yeah, you know, and these catastrophic catastrophic events that wiped out entire civilizations. And what if the craters were uh, rock quarries from before, like the flood? What if say that again? What if the craters were like rock quarries? So craters were like Before rock flood, quarries. And then okay. When the flood happened, it would fit like, like if you had a hole and then you washed a bunch of like water over it or whatever, and like a had like a mini flood over it or whatever, it would fill in part of the hole, still leave sure. an indent, and it would still be. Yeah. It's That's think of it. Think of it this way, and I've said this on a bunch of stuff, which is if we're not the first civilization, and I do not think for in the. We are definitely not not version one in here. Right. It's it's so blatantly obvious. And you know, again, take a look at the sunken cities off of um, Japan and sunken cities off of India. Oh yeah. Uh, the the Bosnian pyramids, which will never probably Russian be pyramids, China pyramids. Yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of uh, Atlantis, the Bimini Road. Why doesn't anybody talk about the Bimini Road? For mm-hmm. God's sakes. Dave was talking all about that when he came on. Yeah. yeah. It's there's 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 indications that there are groups that were here before us. So the question is, is was there terraforming during these breaks of the action? 
you know, meaning version, you know, between version five and version six, what sort of terraforming? And it goes back to the old, the old texts and the old legends, which was, you know, back in the day, you know, the, there's old myths that there was no sun and the moon at all. It was just shades of light and darkness. Mm -hmm. And that eventually, and the, the, the waters were, were different. And then the continents were more lumped together, which again, makes more sense on a, a flat earth than a round earth. Right. In fact, a little interesting little geography thing, if you didn't already hear this one, whereas if you look at the <clears throat> interest, interesting, you look at the Mercator map, you know, the, the map is mm -hmm. pulled down in front of the classrooms. Right. All the pointy edges are pointed down. And you think that, well, that doesn't make any sense. You know, like little tips yeah, like Baja, like, California, yeah. and Norway, yeah. and all this. Everything's pointed down. South America. No, nothing's pointed up. In fact, if you flip it upside down, it really becomes more evident. So, but, okay. But when you look at it from a flat model, they're not all pointed down. They're all pointed out. Like, like they were, like they were formed, like, like they were spread, like maybe. they were spread that way. But the point is, naturally, statistically, you should have some that are pointed towards the North Pole. Yeah, that's wild. But they're not. But anyway, the the old civilizations they were around, and I firmly believe that you know we there was another civilization that had to move off before we got here, and we're going to have to vacate before another one comes after us. Yeah, when we were talking with Dave, he was talking about, in the Bible, uh, the Adam and Eve story, he was talking about the, how the earth became formless and void. So it was like his conjecture is that, you know, man or some form of man um, existed for possibly millions of years, and then it was like 6,000 years ago was, was the Adam and Eve story. Sure. But man on earth had existed for millions of years before that. And so, I mean, that's a possibility too, oh, yeah. if these craters are happening in those civilizations. How, How does that also tie in with like the evolutionary mindset? What, the million, think, millions of years? Yeah, the millions of years. Yeah, well, maybe. no, because he's saying it's kind of a both situation. So the question was, isn't that tying it into an evolutionary mindset where um, it's possible that, that man could have been created, but there's beings here before us. So then does he like subscribe basically to like when it says like the first day instead of just a 24 hour day it's a good span of like time. a millennium oh, yeah, yeah, i'm not yeah. sure what his, his I, thoughts are on that i i, I can't, personally i can't go with that one yeah <laughs> well the, I mean, it yeah the the it when it comes to the the civilizations how many versions are have there been here before us we're not going to know anytime soon but i will say that i firmly believe there's been survivors from from the previous ones uh, people because people said okay what about flying saucers one of the big questions like yeah, what yeah. About flying saucers yeah. aliens aliens because initially remember <laughs> because our conditioning it's like aliens came from other planets right so there's martians and venusians and like Saturn. zechariah sitchin so, that whole theory oh don't get me started you know, with that guy but that's the, his whole theory well yeah it is but he completely ripped it off and and uh camera guy here will probably attest to this the uh, when worlds collide the oh, Zachariah yeah. Sitchin story is straight out of when's worlds collide and nobody Sorry. What the hell? <laughs> So Dude, his, his phone went off in the background. <laughs> so Zachary and Sitch, Sitch, Sitchin's story was taken straight off of uh, uh, when worlds collide. So, but I'm sorry, when it comes to spaceships, and let, let me throw that out there. You know, do I think there's spaceships? Absolutely. I go out and buy a pair of night vision binoculars. You can buy them on Amazon. I'm not going to endorse any one group, but I use the, the one from uh, Night Owl. Yeah. Get it in a five power. It costs you about 400 bucks. You can get them used if you want, and then just turn them on, get your eyes adjusted, and start looking at the sky. There's a lot of stuff flying up there, and it's not satellites. They do not move like satellites, and which would make sense, because any civilization that reaches a level of technology, and we were not allowed to have this, and we, we of course, fantasized about it for decades and decades, the whole Jetsons future. Right. You know, where are freaking flying cars? Yeah. They're not here. So, and the Even though we have the technology for it. Exactly. We've had the, it for 30 years. The, yeah, <laughs> if you could prove it, you know, in, in a large, lift something big. So the, the unified field engine, which is the engine we're not allowed to have for whatever reason, which balances the, the formula between gravitational waves, not going down the gravity road here, mm -hmm. gravitational waves and electromagnetic waves, which means you can take just about any vehicle if you have the right power source and propel it at just about any velocity, ignoring any G forces. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't need cars. What is that technology called? Oh, unified field. Unified field. Yeah. Unified. I've only heard that in relation to like the unified field theory. It is. Quantum. That is. That is oh, unified that's, field theory. That's oh. the thing that supposedly I Einstein was never going to give up, right? Which yeah, was, was his whole it, thing. They, in fact, he even mumbled about it, and they, they came up with a story, the famous Philadelphia experiment, which was okay. How does the unified field work? I was okay. Well, you got to get a big power source, and you got to see if you can modulate the 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 balance between 
these sort of waves and the, an electromagnetic wave. And if you can do that, you might be able, and again, it's more sophisticated than that. You might be able to like lift things. What else could you do? Could you make a ship radar invisible? Yeah, of course you could. You know, could you do time travel? Well, let's not get into that. But you know, in the whole field, you can do some ext extraordinary things. You can do extraordinary things, and for. Fortunately, the Navy, I think, took a shot at it and, and hurt a whole bunch of people. And they said, yeah, we'll work on this somewhere else. Wow. So, but the unified field theory, if you have that technology, you can make basically spaceships, you know, things that can, you know, hover and go around and do anything you want. But there's a side effect to that. And if, if you have those, you will find out the shape of this world really, really quickly. Meaning you would be able to go up high enough instantly, you know, if you had a flying car and wow. find the world so we are not allowed to have it we're allowed to have a lot of things but there's some things we aren't allowed to have unified i wonder if what if that's what those vimanas were called in ancient india oh god yes you know something yeah, like that using Indian, that technology the indians are no you bring up ufos to, to to anyone in india and they'll say oh yeah whatever it's in the mahabharata yeah, <laughs> we've, yeah. we've known this forever it's yeah. part of our legend where we had giant floating you know not just not just ufos giant ufos mm -hmm. and they went to war and pretty much destroyed each other and and, you know, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, like anybody does. Yeah. You know, it's what you do. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, oh, okay. oh, do we got to go? Uh, pretty soon. Okay. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna th run this by you. Yeah. My um, theory on the days of Peleg and uh, mentioned in the Bible and the uh, what is that called? Um, where man tried to build the structure to God. What is that called? Oh, Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder if that was if the earth is inside of a dome, um, if it's not inside of a dome, then this whole theory just, just goes to play. Right, exactly. But if it's inside of a dome, what if when they did that, because if they built that in the center of the earth, like at the North Pole, or it, would, it would take, like you couldn't make it to the top, but if you're on the side, you if you're close to the edge, yeah. you know, it says in the Bible that like, you know, God thought they were going to reach, it was man's attempt to reach God. Maybe they were going to they they make it. Maybe they're going to hit that barrier and find some stuff out. Yeah. I mean, the story goes that it's not, it's not that they were going, that they were, had a chance. They were going to, it was going to happen. And that says like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. It actually took a year to walk from the, uh, there's extra biblical books. Right. Uh, like the book of Jasher, the book of Enoch and stuff. Yeah. Maccabees and that, all that. Yeah. Yep. That talk about like, how big this thing actually was and that's why they built it in the plains of Shinar right was because they needed a big enough base it had to be miles long yeah. for them to be able to build otherwise it would be like Jenga <laughs> right and right fall over all of right a uh, what if they were close to hitting that barrier yeah and why again the, it was that was one of those things I just threw in there and I never said the Tower of Babel in it but I love the fact that everybody's like it's the Tower of Babel isn't it I was going yeah it is the Tower of Babel but it could be any civilization really that right. that, that made that technological leap yeah. of structural engineering. So. Yeah, it's crazy. Hey, one final thing sure. um, before we leave. What about um, the Northern Lights? Do you have any thoughts about that? Eh, just part of the display system. I'm sorry, part of the display system. Yeah. Uh, no different than <clears throat> a waxing and waning crescent, no different than a blood moon. It's part of the illusion, part of the star system. It's just mm -hmm. pretty. Just part of the deal. Yeah, it's, that's it. I mean, the, if the, the sun and the moon and the stars were meant to inspire man, the, the northern lights, just another. Do you get to see them up where you are? Uh, yeah, every Sometimes. once in a while. And I, the way I saw them was weird. It was a, it was a weird night in, um, on, in Langley. And, you know, they're absolutely silent, of course. And, right. But they weren't this kind of floaty thing. It was like these weird ribbons that were just ripping from one end of the horizon to the other. I mean, it looked, it felt like a, like a TV that was on the fritz. How weird. I know. And, and, yeah. and I'm going, and, and my mother was, was there as well. And I'm going, wow, that is some really unusual stuff. And, and she goes, oh, it's just the Northern Lights. And every other picture I've seen of the Northern Lights since then didn't match up with what I was seeing. I mean, it really? was literally just these massive ribbons that when you see something cross the horizon in, you know, just a second or two, yeah. it, it really throws you. So, That's a trip. Yeah. But yeah, we're again, all the world's a stage and we're in it. Yeah. We're just the actors. Yeah. Uh, so where can people find you? What's the best place? Best, <clears throat> excuse me. Best place is going to uh, probably YouTube. Uh, although, you know, just type into Google. I you know I give out all the sites, but just go into to Google and type in uh, Flat Earth Clues. You'll, you'll eventually get to me. Uh, yeah. The other people that have mirrored uh, my stuff, uh, your, it's called Under the Dome Documentary or They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. But just when you go to Flat Earth Clues, you'll, you'll get to my stuff. Do you have flatearthclues.com? Or or uh, no, I do not. 
Uh, I didn't really want to either. Uh, the I've got enclosed world.com. Oh, really? And okay. my YouTube channel is just my name. Uh, but again, because again, when I made this, I had no idea it was going to get the traction it was. So wow. it was just. You know, so now and, you're doing this full time? Yep. That's what I'm doing. Uh, it was turned into a book by a London publishing company. Really? And yeah, they called me up. Uh, in fact, my autobiography will be, if I ever write it, uh, will be called Unsolicited. Because everybody's just been calling me with different things. Uh, the radio show program, they called me up. Uh, the um, uh, even YouTube, they were the ones that uh, they were the ones that told me to monetize the channel, which I thought was really odd. They actually wrote me a letter and said, "Hey, you ever think about monetizing your channel?" Really? Yeah. And normally you get stuff from from network people. You know, people's like, "Oh, join our network, join our network." Yeah. But in this case, it was actually Google that said, "Hey, maybe you should think about monetizing." So 15 months in, I said, "Okay, I'll, I'll monetize." Maybe they knew something you didn't. I yeah go figure. Right? Do you monetize it now or are you? Oh yeah, that? I do monetize yeah, yeah, it now, yeah. and uh, and I've given and then I had to figure out how much money I gave away, because yeah. when I made my stuff Creative Commons license, so I, I gave away thousands and thousands of dollars to guys that uh, hey great for them it spread the word I mean the biggest yeah. the the one of the big ones uh, they under the dome or is it they're hiding God under the dome documentary things got three point six million hits which is a lot. Wow. For uh, for YouTube, especially you sh- nowadays. You should make your videos all like, you know, do what they did and put them all into one and have your own documentary. Oh, I did. I did. I made oh, you did do I, that. I ended up compressing it. I made it, I called it the uh, Flat Earth Clues Director's Cut. Oh, okay. And, so I, that's and like I tightened t- up the video a little bit and made the audio a little, a little deeper. And uh, Is that like, th- what is it, two hours? Yeah, about two hours. So what clue are you on now? Are, are you going to make more? What's the I, you know, I would if there was demand for it. But what this kind of... I won't say started because I didn't create Flat Earth, but it, what it prompted was everybody else making their own videos. I have had very few people actually write me and say, oh, we need more clues. Because once the first 11 were out, it pretty much tell, tells, you know, it's about two hours. It yeah. pretty much went from A to Z what I thought. And then everybody from there decided to do their own thing. So some people, you know, it, it went into three forks. <clears throat> one was uh, just connecting the dots like I did. The other, the second one was... Um, uh, scientific method, you know, experiments. Right. And the third side was religious. And so those three forks just went off on their own. And I mean, I make videos, I make a lot, I still make a whole bunch of videos, but I don't have to do as much original content anymore. Yeah. Nowadays, I'm just, you know, talking what we're doing now and doing shows and answering questions. Yeah, so like that's... when I do the conference, I'm doing basically a Q&A when I go down there. Oh, that's cool. So people can, because I'm not gonna be able to talk to everybody that's there. So on, on your TFR show, on your radio show, how many radio shows do you do a week? Uh, two. You do moment. two? I do two at TFR and I do Patricia's show. Okay, so one of those is where you answer questions, right? Right, TFR is where I usually answer questions. Okay. Uh, Patricia's show, I'm, I'm just eye candy. Yeah, yeah, to be yeah of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she's, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's I mean, kind of homely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if someone types in Flat Earth Clues, they can find yeah, you. Yeah, Flat Earth Clues, find me. Forget about anything else, you'll eventually get to me. My name's Mark Sargent. Okay, Like cool. it says on the shirt. Like it says on the shirt right yep. there. Yep. Awesome, thanks, man, for being here. Hey, thank you.